pitching tonight. It is game number three of this series in front of a sold out crowd here at Citizens Bank Park. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, along with Chris Wheeler. We'll talk to Gary Matthews a little later on. Well, again, game one was about the Dodgers offense. Game two is about the Phillies pitching. And, Wheels, the Phillies are hoping that game three is not only about the Phillies pitching in Joe Blanton, but also about their offense. Well, Tom, they've had good luck with the Dodgers. The Dodgers have not won a series against the Phillies for a long time. So the Phillies are out to win the series here tonight, continue their hot streak here at home, and hopefully have good pitching and good uh, uh, offense. Now, Joe, in his last time out, Blanton had a good outing against the New York Mets in the first game of that weekend series. Uh, the Phillies won the game seven to five but he gave him a solid seven only gave up two runs in that game and had good stuff. He threw the ball over the plate change speeds the way that he's able to do and was very very effective in that game. We talk all the time about before and after the All Star game with Joe Blanton and this year right along with what his career has been his earned run average look at the difference between the before and after and he's pitched very very well and the Phillies have won six out of his last ten starts he hasn't won them but the club has won them which means he keeps them in the ball game for the most part so you know they expect him to pitch well here tonight Phillies are going up a very tough pitcher tonight in Clayton Kershaw so you know how much offense they're going to be able to put on the board but they hope Joe can keep the game close it's interesting Joe Blanton a lot like the other Phillies start one and one over his last five games and like every other starter a whole lot of no decisions. We'll see what happens tonight. It's Joe Blanton against Clayton Kershaw. It's the final game of this three game series between the Phillies and the Dodgers. Raul Ibanez well he's riding an 18 game hitting streak. He's in the two hole tonight. We'll get to the lineups and the first pitch when we return. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Budweiser official beer of the thirst inning Budweiser it's what we do by Southwest Airlines want to see what a real airline is like go to southwest.com grab your bag it's on by Toyota there are many reasons to buy a Toyota and now's the perfect time to get yours during Toyota's national clearance event by Xfinity it's TV phone and internet reinvented from Comcast by Citizens Bank with the most seven day branches in the Philadelphia area and by Independence Blue Cross. We're here for you every step of the way. Well, it started as a warm day here. The Delaware Valley is now a windy night as the Phillies of the Dodgers get set for the final game of this three game series. The Phillies are just about ready to take the field behind Joe Blanton, who concluded his warm up tosses and looking to give the Phils a victory. In this series against the Dodgers, the umpires for today's ball game. Well, the home plate umpire is Todd Tishner, and he's normally a Triple A umpire. He's kind of filling in this series, so it's kind of a kick for him to get a chance to be behind the plate. We've seen him behind the plate a couple different times this year. Eric Cooper's over at first. Mike Riley's the crew chief, and Chad Fairchild, who did a nice job last night, is around to third. Well, the lineup tonight for the Dodgers brought to you by Xfinity, only from Comcast. Leading it off in left field, Scott Pusednik. Ryan Terrio, the second baseman, bats second. Andre Ethier hits third, followed by James Loney, the first baseman. Ronnie Belliard starts at third base tonight. He'll bat fifth. Matt Kemp gets a start in center field. He'll hit sixth. And the bottom third of Jamie Carroll, Brad Ausmus, and Clayton Kershaw to face right hander Joe Blanton. Joe making his 19th start of the year. Wheels, he's trying to get back to the 500 mark, but like a lot of other Phillies pitchers, he's really just trying to get into the win column. Yeah, he's had a lot of no decisions, Tom. In his last 10 starts, though, the Phillies are 6 and 4, as we talked about in the opening, with way too many hits and innings pitched. But, you know, he doesn't walk a lot of batters. That's one thing about Blanton. Uh, normally, to get on against him, you have to hit the ball. He's not a big strikeout guy either. He'll change speeds. Here's our Southwest Airlines scouting report. And, Good numbers against the Dodgers. He's also pitching postseason against them. That's his fastball. When he's down in the zone, he can really use his off-speed stuff. Six or more innings in five straight starts. Well, as Blanton gets uh, ready to finish up his warm-up tosses, let's take a look at the keys to the game. Wheels brought to you by Nissan. Well, you know, the Phillies are at that point in the season where winning series is really huge. If you can keep winning two out of three, that means you're winning at a 666 percentage. And Clayton Kershaw is tough. He is nasty pitcher, but you can get to him with some patience and make him throw a lot of pitches and fall behind in the count. Oh, well, it's the end of the model year, and Nissan's laying it all on the line. Nissan's bottom line sales event going on now. Well, Scott Pesednik leads it off, and the first pitch is taken outside, so we're underway. Pesednik is five for ten in the series against the Bills, riding an eight-game hitting streak. 
And he takes one at the knees for strike one. And the wind is blowing out to left and left center big time here tonight. There was no batting practice. Field was covered. It never rained. But you're going to get a lot. Hitters are going to get a lot of help on balls the other way. The ball Pesednik hit last night that hit the walls a home run tonight. Pesednik overall hitting 259 with the Dodgers. He hit 310 this year with the Kansas City Royals as you got a glimpse of the wind. He's given them some life. Uh, they really like him at the top of the order. He has an eight game hitting streak and they really like Terrio hitting behind him because Pesednik's a base stealer and Terrio's a guy who make contact and hit the ball the other way and protect the base steal. He's fighting off a couple pitches here. He gets a lot of bleeders you know because he'll get infield hits. Uh, he had two of them last night. And overall this year he has 135 hits which would put him third in the National League but again that combines his numbers from the American League when he was with the Royals earlier this season. That's a lot of hits yeah, and he keeps fouling them off here right at the start of the game running uh, giving Joe Blanton a tough at bat. The air softly to left. Ibanez not going to get there. That's a nine game hitting streak for Pesednik. And he's aboard to start the first. Yeah, that's what he does. He hits them hard, hits them soft. And, you know, the guy bounces around from team to team. And, you know, we don't see him all that much, but every time you see him, he looks like he's a pretty good player. So he's aboard, and that'll bring Ryan Terrio to the plate. Over there talking to Mariano Duncan, one of the. Another one of the Phillies influences here with the Dodgers coaching staff. They have three guys. Mariano Duncan's over at first base. And of course, Larry Ball at third, and then Kenny Howell is a bullpen coach who pitched here for a number of years. There's Dunkey. He's funny. What about that guy? Is he funny? It's at times. <laughs> Terrio takes a fastball for a strike, and it's 0 and 1. Terrio's hitting 285, one homer and 24 runs batted in. And those are his combined numbers between the Dodgers and the Cubs. His former double play combination, Mike Fontenot, was traded to the San Francisco Giants. So the Cubs, who began the season with Terrio and Fontenot up the middle, no longer have either of them. No, and they uh, they came back to tie the Giants seven seven today, and then just lost in the bottom of the ninth eight seven. Andres Torres, an RBI base hit, won it for the Giants. Pat Burrell hit two home runs in that ball game for San Francisco. Well, he said he hit a slam, huh? Did, and it was a long one. <laughs> He'll be here next week for the Pat Burrell fans, and probably a lot of them still in this area. Chopper foul, and it's one ball and two strikes. Well, the current wild card standings look like this. The Phillies tied with the Reds, a game and a half behind the Giants. Now, if the Phillies win tonight, they'll be a game back. A half game is because the Giants have already won today. The Reds, meanwhile, are off today. The Braves are off as well. We'll get to that in a moment. See, even after tonight, the Giants will have played two more games than the Phillies. Softly hit towards second. Valdez thought about second, but instead he thought wisely and threw to first. One yeah, away. And that was a good play by Wilson. Uh, he really charged that ball well, and he was trying to beat Pesednik to it. Get it, tag it, tag him, throw the first double play. Pesednik's just too fast. And he also realized, you know what, I better not throw this to second. Watch him come charge it. Now Pesednik is well by the ball at that point. He takes a quick look. He knows he has a slower runner who is the hitter as opposed to the base runner. So he had a chance to peak and know he still had to be able to get the runner at first base. So the Dodgers with the rudder in scoring position. Here's Ethier. And he takes a fastball for a strike. See Ethier's numbers against Joe. Ethier and James Loney have combined to pick up 10 hits in 19 at bats against Blatt. And those are the next two hitters. Joe trying to get through the first inning without allowing a run. That's been one of his issues this year, allowing first inning runs. Like it is for a lot of starters. One 
and to the count a foul ball back to the the seats toward the Hall of Fame club. During the 2010 season Turkey Hill will contribute one hundred dollars for each Phillies victory and five cents for each carton of Phillies Grand Slam ice cream sold to support the Phillies youth baseball and softball programs. He uses changeup really effectively these left handed hitters. Not this pitch. Last ball hit to the right side and it skipped right to Valdez. The runner moves to third, but there are two outs. Yeah, Joe wanted to come inside with that and missed his spot, but still got the out. Well, this has been a busy day in the National League and in particular the National League East. How about what went on last night after the Mets game? Francisco Rodriguez placed on the restricted list, suspended for two games by the Mets. And arrested and charged with third degree assault, which is a misdemeanor up in New York, for uh, allegedly attacking his father in law in the family room at City Field last night. Wow. Chipper Jones, it turns out the knee injury he sustained the other day is a torn ACL in his left knee. He's out for the year. Mike Stanton had a five hit night last night, and he continues to surge for the Florida Marlins. See so. that on Chipper, that's a shame because, you know, a lot of people thought he may retire at the end of the year. Now you wonder if he's going to be able to play again because that's a long rehab for for an ACL. Well, it's almost the same the same thing that happened to Jamie Moyer different part of the body but he's facing the same kind of decision. Yeah. And uh, you know Chipper Jones has such an unbelievable career with the Atlanta Braves and we've seen the whole thing because he's been with the same team his whole career playing against the Phillies in this division because the Braves had moved over there uh, moved over to this division right after he came up. 3 and 0 the count to Loney. It's almost as if Blanton's working around him here with Ronnie Belliard waiting on deck. I'm trying to think with the Braves. They may have had one year still in the Western Division when Chipper Jones came up, or his first full year may have been their, their year over uh, in the National League East. But anyway, it was right around that time. So we've basically seen his whole career right here in this division. And probably a Hall of Fame career. Four. Loney walks on four pitches. So runners on first and third here in the first. And that'll bring Ronnie Belliard to the plate. But Sudnick over third. And Loney takes his spot at first. And yeah, they did throw a lot of off speed pitches to him there. And as you said, Tom, maybe pitching around him. Belliard is one of those guys, he, he can hit anything though. You know, he's a wild swinger, swing in any area. Hitting only 225, but he did a nice job for the Dodgers the last couple of years. He's always been a good extra man on a club. Line drive, base hit it to center field, and the Dodgers take the early lead. 1 0 as Pesetnik scores from third. And again, Joe gives up a first inning run. It's an RBI single for Belliard, just his 17th RBI of the year. Pesetnik setting the table for them again with that little bloop single and the move him around scores on the hit and there you go what Tom's talking about with these first inning runs. Like he hit a change up or an off speed pitches huh change up and it ran right back into the middle of the plate. So Belliard's at first Loney's at second good size lead for both Matt Kent the batter and he takes a fastball for strike one. This is the first start for Kemp in this series. He had two pinch hit appearances in the first two games. Overall, you look at those numbers, you think, well, that's not that bad. But he really has struggled since the All Star break. And it's one ball and one strike as that fastball misses outside. Yeah, look at the difference. More in the production, just 12 yeah. RBIs in 26 games since the break. Swing and a miss, and it's one and two. We can see with that pull-off swing he has working right now. If that's what he's doing, it's he's diving, pulling off. But he's dangerous, and with that wind blowing out the left and left center, you do not want him to get one elevated out in that area because he's really strong. 24 pitches for Blatton in the inning. Matt Kemp last year, 26 homers, 101 RBIs. He hit 297. And he takes a change up, and it's two and two. In fact, 
they were so optimistic about Kemp and Ethier and how how good they were going to be together this year they put the two of them on the cover of the media guy that's usually an indication that you're at least for this year a foundation for the organization. Yeah. We felt that those two guys are their future. Chopper left side. That's going to sneak into left field a base hit. Loney's around third. He's going to score. Ibanez's throw comes to the plate, but it's two nothing Dodgers. And again, it's just the 13th RBI for Kemp since the All Star break. So he's given up an RBI single to Ronnie Belliard, who has just 17 on the season. And now an RBI single to Matt Kemp. You know, we don't know if they pitched around Loney or not, but if they did, it's kind of backfired. Because two straight right handed batters have gotten base hits. Now, granted, that one right there was a seeing eye, Hunter Hopper, but still, he got through the hole and it's 2 0 and they're still going. And Jamie Carroll is the batter. Carroll making his 46th start of the year at shortstop. And Blanton falls behind, 1 0. One for eight in the series. He's been on base three times with his two walks. Latin in his last outing went seven innings he allowed two runs on seven hits picked up four strikeouts against the Mets. He received a no decision in that ball game. We mentioned since the All-Star break it's been kind of the storyline for him like a lot of other Phillies pitchers where he, he's pitched OK but hasn't gotten a decision. A looper toward left center field that's going to drop in for a base hit. Belliard's going to score. It's three nothing Dodgers. The throw went to third and that allows Carroll to go to second. Well it's just sloppy play right there by the Phillies too. You know they give up the hit and that's you know that's bad enough for the third run but then Jason knows he has no reason to throw that ball to third base. And he did and uh, you know there's two outs. But you still have put another run into scoring position. Not only could a double play away, but you took a force away and have another running scoring position. I don't know what he was thinking there. And he's off balance and has no shot at Kemp. And Jamie Carroll's a very sound player, and he sees that and just moves into second. Well, now Blanton falls behind Brad Ausmus, and he's thrown 31 pitches in this first inning. Yeah, this is. And all these runs with two outs. And now they're going to have to walk Ausmus intentionally to face Clayton Kershaw. Yeah, right now you're already looking at getting into the part of the bullpen you don't want to get into where they got hurt the other night. The bullpen is one man down compared to the other night. Antonio Basardo has been sent out to Lehigh Valley because Shane Victorino was activated earlier today. Now, the Phillies were one up in the bullpen with Basardo. So Brad Ausmus is intentionally walked. The bases are loaded with Kemp at third, Carroll at second, Ausmus over at first. And here's Kershaw, just two for 40 this year. A good athlete, not much of a hitter. And he takes a swing and a foul. It's 0 1. Hit foul over the Dodgers dugout and it remains 0 and 2. I always thought as a fan when I was a kid and I came to the ballpark when the other team batted around in the first inning and you just barely sat in your seats, you're sitting there thinking, oh no. Oh no is right. What you have to try and think is, oh, it's early. Yep. That one's hit hard, but right Ooh. at Valdez, he's got it and throws to first. The side is finally retired, but nine men come to the plate in the inning for the Dodgers. They scored three runs on four hits. We go to the bottom of the first. It's the Dodgers three. And the Phillies coming up.
MLB at Home is presented by Scott's, who knows that some of the best games are played in the backyard. Scott's, grow more good. Bottom of the first, the Phillies trail at 3-0. They'll get their first look at Clayton Kershaw here in 2010. And let's take a look at the lineup that he'll look at tonight. Brought to you by Xfinity, only from Comcast. Leading it off at shortstop, Jimmy Rollins. Raul Ibanez, the left fielder, bats second. Placido Polanco hits third, followed by Mike Sweeney, the first baseman. Jason Worth is in center field. He'll bat fifth. Ben Francisco's in right. He'll hit sixth. Then the bottom third of Carlos Ruiz, Wilson Valdez, and Joe Blanton. And they'll face left-hander Clayton Kershaw. Kershaw, just 22 years old, making his 24th start. And he's got pretty good numbers, a 3.19 earned run average. Now a few things jump out at you there. Look at the uh, strikeouts. Look at the hits per innings pitch. Left-handed hitters, 193 against him. But as we mentioned, uh, he can get erratic, and that's what you have to hope happens here tonight. Because when he's on his game, he's really a problem. He has great stuff. He's very young. Pitches a lot better at home than he does on the road, and that's another thing maybe in the Phillies' favor. And you see, he has not pitched well against the Phillies, especially here in Philadelphia. He's going to throw fastball, curveball, slider. Really doesn't throw a changeup. You know, his curveball and his slider are kind of an in-between. It's hard to tell them apart sometimes. And his fastball, he really likes to throw it a lot. Well, he started two games against the Phillies in the National League Championship Series. And his numbers, we'll set, are better in L.A. than on the road. They're also way better in day games than night games because sometimes he's just tough to see. Jimmy Rollins leads it off. And Jimmy takes a 93-mile-an-hour fastball for a strike. His delivery's kind of funky. has a, like a little hesitation in it. Uh, he's just really good. He's young, and he's still learning. Rollins for the series is three for nine. He's really picked it up here at home. In fact, he's on an eight game hitting streak at this point. The Phillies have a, a handful of guys that are riding hitting streaks. In the air on the right side. Into foul territory. James Loney's over. And he's fighting the win, but he casually makes the catch. One away. Well, here's Kershaw's numbers regular season and postseason against the Phillies and you know really none of them stand out as being good at well, all. No they've they've had very good success against this guy. But you know everybody gets a little bit better when they have a three nothing lead before they hit the slab out there. Well, and the other thing too is they get better as they get older too. You know when he pitched against the Phillies the first time he was 20 years old now he's 22. He and, uh, not, not that that's a huge jump but it's still a jump. No he and Hamels matched up in a heck of a game last year out of Dodger Stadium the Cole one. Two and oh the count to Ibanez Raul is on a an 18 game hitting streak which is the longest current streak in the National League and it's the third longest in the season. Buster Posey of the Giants hit in 21 straight from the 4th of July to the 28th of July. And you see what Ibanez's numbers look like during this streak. He has scored 16, he's driven in 17, but he's also walked 14 times. That's a big deal. See how many fastballs Kershaw's thrown. Is it seven pitches, seven fastballs? And he has a three run lead, so you would expect him to throw a lot of them. Good pitch to hit there for Raul, and he fouled it back. The Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Patty Davis of Ambler, PA. If the Phillies hit a home run in tonight's ball game, Patty's going to win two hundred dollars. Get the feeling there's going to be some bombs tonight. The way the wind is blowing out toward left, the wind might take that one out of play, and it does. Wow, did it move? Yeah, that gives you an idea. The ball that Jimmy hit looked like it was in the. This looks like a spring training game. With the win. The ball that Jimmy hit looked like it was out of play down the first baseline. You saw Loney laughing after he caught it because the wind blew it back into fair and not in fair territory, but onto the playing field, and he caught it easily. And you can see him talking to uh, Terry on his way back, like, oh man, you see that? In the air to center field, Matt Kemp on the run, got a good jump on it, and that little leap at the end puts it away for the second out. Still a pretty good swing by Ibanez against the left-hander. 
Just locked into a 3 2 fastball and smoked it. What you can do about that. Kemp had it all the way. It was an easy play for him. And now with two outs, here's Polanco. Polanco, he also has a hitting streak going. Ten straight games. And he takes a fastball for a strike. Second in the league and hitting a 319. Hitting 359 here in the month of August. And a liner toward left to base hit. That's an 11 game hitting streak for Polanco. Finally threw something off speed there. You can see Polly was out in front of it a little bit. Same changeup is by far his fourth best pitch. He doesn't even throw that many of them. That was a changeup. Well, he's going to throw a few tonight, I guess. And you see, he just got out front, hit off the end of the bat. But you know, he's such a good contact hitter, and he's locked in such a groove right now. Now with two outs and a runner at first, Mike Sweeney is the batter. Sweeney playing first base tonight. He came on in last night's ball game. For the injured Ross Glode, and he loops it to right. Terrio going out. It drops right in front of Ethier. Polanco was running on contact. He'll go to third. And the Phillies have runners on first and third with two outs. Yeah, Ethier and Terrio haven't played together that long, and Ethier thought he was, they were going to run into each other. And he, he kind of shied off a little bit, and Terrio couldn't get there, so it drops in. See Sweeney gets in. Here comes Terrio. He really can't get this. Now watch Ethier right there. See, he took a peek at Terrio, and he thought, "Here, right, watch it again." Right here, he's going. And then he takes a look down. Now it's too late because he, he didn't know where his second baseman was. And he didn't want to collide. And by the time Terrio had peeled off, the ball dropped. Well, they appeal to second base. Dodgers thought that. Dodgers thought Polanco missed second, going over to third. But Mike Riley says. Uh uh. I think they saw him stumbling a little bit in the area of second base, so that's why they appealed it. to Joe Torre asked for that. With two outs, here's Jason Worth with runners on first and third. Though he's trying to get a run back, trailing at three nothing. And you get a ball in the air right now to left and left center with a right hand hitter, you get it all back. Let's see what Jason's done over his last seven games. A seven game streak hitting 423. It's over for a strike. It's one and one. That was a slider from Kershaw. When he first came up. He threw a lot of fastball, curveball. Now they say he's throwing more of a harder breaking ball slider. Doesn't mean he's he's gotten off his curveball, but he doesn't use it the way he used to when he first came uh, to the major leagues. Hmm. Pretty good pitch to hit for Jason. And he fouls it back, and it's one ball and two strikes. You know, Brad Osmus is really a veteran catcher. He'll do a good job, I would think, with a young pitcher like Kershaw. A lot of times, you want to get off a fastball when a guy fouls one straight back like that. But then again, maybe he doesn't want to go to two-two. So, see how they decide to work him here. They go fastball. He hits it towards center. And it's not that deep. Kemp makes the catch, and the side is retired. No runs, two hits, two men left for the Phils. We've completed one. We go to the second. Phillies trail it by three. Follow the Phillies on your iPhone, iPod Touch, BlackBerry, and Android phone with MLB.com at bat 2010, featuring play by play video highlights and live audio broadcasts. Visit Phillies.com today on your iPhone, iPod Touch, Android, or BlackBerry for more details. Now we go to the second. And the top of the order is up for the Dodgers after they batted around in the first and scored three runs on four hits. Joe Blanton threw 38 pitches. In the first inning, and that's not his season high. Can you tell me, Wheels, what game was his season high? No. Boston Red Sox, 42 oh, pitches yeah, in the first was, inning of that, that ball. That was game. when that guy hit the grand slam in his first at bat. 
first major league at bat. Yep. Switch it. The, the, the Nava kid. Nava. Right. And Joe Castiglione, the radio voice of the Red Sox, said to Nava, you go up there with your first at bat. Look fastball. Yeah. And he did, and he hit it into the bullpen. <laughs> Look at that. Is he another palindrome? Nava? Is that spelled the no. same? No, it isn't. That no. isn't spelled the same backwards and forward. That would be Avon. Yeah. Or Avon. Well, here's uh, Joe's problem started right out of the shoot with uh, this guy, Pesednik. He kept fouling off pitches like this and then finally blooped one to the outfield. But he gave up three two out runs. Yeah, the hardest hit ball of the of the inning was Ronnie Belliard's single to center. And Kershaw's out to end the inning. That's true. Slaps another one towards short backhanded by Jimmy. Sets himself, throws to first, not in time. But Pesednik is fast. Oh, he can fly. He's amazing considering he's in his mid 30s now. Infield single. That's the third infield hit he's had in this series. And his seventh hit overall. 38 2 hit game of the season. And Jimmy does everything he can there. He backhands it. He gets a lot on the throw. Skids the hop and Pesetti just beats it. That's when you say, We got him. And Eric Cooper said, Uh uh. Good move over by Blatt. He nearly got Pesednik. And they have to keep an eye on him because Pesednik can run. He's four for four with the Dodgers stealing bases. He stole 30 bases with the Royals. He's got that little cover on his hand just to protect his right hand. There it is. He gets back that's why you know they really like a left handed first baseman a lot of times because they get that and get it down quicker just because of where they catch it and they also protect the hole a little bit better that's why you see so many whoop another good one you see a lot of you know left handed first baseman yeah, I didn't like that when I was growing up left handed first base <laughs> well they can only play so many positions if you throw left handed Kind of limits you. Towards center field, Jason Worth ventures back, makes the grab. The sudden it goes back to first. One away. In that first inning, Blanton, after Pesednik's single, did get the next two hitters. And with Pesednik on third, that's when he walked Loney and allowed the base hit to Belliard, and then the Dodgers wound up sending nine men to the plate and scored three runs. Ethier grounded out to second his first time up. And he slaps the first pitch foul. There's a sharp contrast, and this is normally the case for Ethier between right handers and left handers. He's hitting 328 against right handers this year, and well below 300 against lefties. This game is rapidly becoming a big time problem for the Phillies not only because of the score which you know it's not that big a deal but because of this pitch count and the problems that they have in middle relief. Well the good news is only two guys worked last night. And Matson and Lid so you know, maybe that off day freshened everybody up and you know, give will give. The bullpen a little bit of a reprieve for tonight. As Roy Oswaldo went seven strong last night. Picked up his first win in a Phillies uniform. One and two the count. That's the pitch count Wheels is talking about. Swing and a miss, he got it. First strikeout for Blatton. And that was a good changeup. And there are two away for Loney. I mentioned the changeup is a good pitch for him, the left handed batters, and there is one. And Carlos does a nice job of blocking it. Of course, 
in that case if the batter can't go anywhere but the runner at first base can advance to second. So Ethier after getting four hits in his four at bats official at bats in the first game of this series is now hitless in his last six at bats. Part of the reason why the Phillies were able to win last night's game two nothing is they kept him off the base paths and they kept a lot of guys off the base paths. Left field, Ibanez headed back, and now comes in a little bit, makes the catch in the side, is retired. A little different inning for Joe Blatt. In fact, he throws 12 pitches, gets through the Dodgers here at the top of the second. Ben Francisco will lead it off when we get back. One of the hottest shows on TV is coming to MyPHL 17. Catch Jerry Piven in the acclaimed comedy series Entourage. That's weeknights this fall on MyPHL 17. Bottom of the second, Ben Francisco leads it off against Clayton Kershaw. Phillies had some pretty good swings against Kershaw in the first. They had a couple of runners aboard, but didn't score. Francisco pulls it toward third. Belliard makes the play, one away. Charlie Emanuel was asked today about Francisco playing right tonight instead of Worth being in right and Shane Victorino being in center. Victorino was activated earlier today off the disabled list after having a good couple of days in Lehigh Valley. And Charlie said that after last night's ball game, he wasn't sure if Victorino would be activated for today's game. The plan all along was to have him ready for tomorrow's game against the New York Mets. So he had already told Francisco that he was going to play. And he had already written out the lineup. So he figured out, I'll just go with it for tonight. And then I have Shane available off the bench if I need him. As the game moves on. And Raul Ibanez has been swinging the bat so well against righties and even lefties. He wanted to make sure he was still in the lineup. One ball one strike the count to Carlos Ruiz 0 for his last 11. And he breaks his bat loops it to center kept didn't get a good start he comes in. And he plays it on one hop. Fortunate break for the Phillies. And Carlos is aboard. And Carlos, as Tom said, had a little offer going. His swing's gotten a little. We talked about that the other day in one of his at bats. You could see his swing was getting a little long again. And right there, he breaks his bat, gets a base hit, and that can do a lot just for your psyche. And Kemp it bounced away a little bit, but uh, Rui's not going to go anywhere. We're down by three runs. And with one down, Wilson Valdez will bat. Larry, Larry Valdez, Larry Joe Bo, Larry Bo was saying before the game, you know, Ruiz kills the Dodgers. He says Johnny Bench is about due to have a big game tonight. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He says Ruiz. And I thought, yeah, that's right. He just Carlos does really hurt them, and especially in postseason, but even during the regular yeah, season. Hitting 444 in his last eight games against the Dodgers. Breaking ball that drops in for a strike to Valdez. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Mets defeated the Rockies 4 0. They didn't need Francisco Rodriguez today because Johan Santana continued his hot pitching. He got the win. It was a complete game shutout. His 11th career complete game, his eighth shutout. And it's only the second series win for the Mets since the 27th of June. And they still haven't won two in a row. Since June 23rd, I think. It, it, I mean, they won the series there, but they didn't win two in a row. Well, let's hope that continues this weekend. Yeah. We won't use that this weekend. Use that note. Maybe we'll use it on Sunday. We'll when use the Phillies it. are going for the sweep. We'll, we'll use <laughs> it when we when things are looking all right. Into the count to Valdez, and he stays alive. Saw Juan Castro today walking in. Valdez 
because of his play earned the spot as the utility man over Juan Castro Castro is now with the Dodgers just called up yesterday. It's good to see Juan he was he was a good guy when he was here in Philadelphia. Opposite way over the head of Loney that's a fair ball hits off the brick wall and over to third goes Ruiz Valdez is going to stop at second the Phillies have two aboard here in the bottom of the second. Tenth double of the year for Wilson Valdez. Yeah, it looked like he was just inside the chalk line. Gets a little bit of a late swing right there. It's slicing. Oh, it's about five five feet fair. Fair by a lot more than look from our angle. Yeah, Wilson Valdez is safe at second base, safe and secure with New York life. So Wilson with his 10th double of the year is in scoring position with Ruiz. Joe Blanton is the batter. I got to think even though they hate to do it that they'll play the infield back here and give up a run with a three run lead and don't want to take any chances that Blanton could squirt one through They're They're looking in the dugout. See there's all kinds of instructions coming out of their dugout and they finally said go back. You know they don't want to do this. Hate to do it with a pitcher hitting. But they have a three run lead and there's, there's no reason to play the infield in here. And they probably figure if the ball goes to one of the cornermen or to Kershaw. If Ruiz happens to break toward the plate they've got to play at the plate. Yeah if they if they want to you know I mean if they just, want to just get an out. If it goes to Kershaw yeah I mean no he's not going to break probably. But just they, they just want an out but they don't want to have everybody in where a little bleeder could get through and the Phillies could get two out of this and then have the top of the order coming up with one out. Want to know the count to Blanton. It's basically, you know, if, if Blanton it puts the ball in play and hits a weak ground ball and they get a run out of it, so what? There's two outs and we're up by two, meaning the Dodgers are up by two. But managers just hate to play the infield back like this with a pitcher up and a runner in scoring position. So last night the Dodgers played the infield in with Oswald up, but that was a obviously a low scoring game. Right. Blanton chops one off the plate. Phil should get a run. Here comes Ruiz. He'll score an RBI and a ground out for Blanton. And he gets Valdez over to third. It's a 3 1 game. There you go. Joe Blanton, great job. Made contact there and he got himself an RBI. Now, if they had, had the third baseman way in, there's no way Carlos is going to be able to score in that. Even if he goes on contact, he's going to be out. But the Dodgers did the right thing. And the Phillies get a run out of it. There's two outs. Here it is. Joe makes contact, beats it right off the home plate area, and a smart play by Belliard too. Doesn't even think about home plate; just throws it to first. First did, RBI of the year for Blatt. He did take a little peek, just in case maybe Ruiz fell down or something. That's human nature, I yeah. guess. And Rollins takes a slider for a strike, and it's 0-1. Jimmy popped out at the foul territory his first time up to Loney over at first. That's a nice run though to get at the bottom of the order. Be even nicer if they can get that other run. Oh, too. Well, this would be sweet if you get a two-out run here. Oh, and won the count to to J. Roll in the dirt, blocked by Osmus. Could it be a real momentum thing for the Phillies here if they could pick one up, another one up. Good numbers for Jimmy with two outs and runners in scoring position. He has Valdez at third. One ball and one strike to count. Two away here in the bottom of the second. Mm. Kershaw has four wild pitches. There's Joe Blanton with his first RBI of the year and his third major league RBI. Not counting his homer. In the World Series, which they don't show up in these kind of numbers we're throwing out, but are remembered oh. by the guy that hit the home run. Absolutely. Jimmy this year is hitting 339 against left handed pitching. He and Shane Victorito, both switch hitters, have hit better against left handers. Over toward the hole, Belliard cuts it off, bobbles, gets the grip, and the side is retired. 
So the Phils have stranded two over third. They do get a run here in the second on the ground out by Blant. We've completed two. We go to the third. It's 3 1 Dodgers. Now more than ever, you need technology you can rely on. I'm a Dell Technologies advisor. And if you're a small business, we're with you. We are with you. We want to help. So we'll be right here. At home, answering your calls, providing support. And standing by you every step of the way. Time now for the Dodge Stump the Fans trivia question. Log on to Phillies.com. Go to the fans section for all the information and please submit your answer on the subject line. Wheels, the question is, who is the only pitcher to win the Rookie of the Year Award, Cy Young Award, and Silver Slugger in the same season? Answer will be revealed in the seventh inning. Ronnie Belliard leads it off here in the top of the third. Belliard had an RBI single and a run scored in the first. Rookie of the Year, Silver Slugger, what was the third? Cy Young. So he wow. must have been a pitcher. Yeah. Some athlete, huh? Contrary to what Sarge says, pitchers can be athletes. Oh yeah. Well, if, if we go along with, uh, you know, I'm not going to give the answer, obviously, but if we go along with the theory that the Dodgers are in town, I got to guess. Broke a bat roller to shortstop. Rollins over to first. No yards retired. And one away. This guy, you could also, you could also throw the uh, gold glove in there. He didn't win it that year, but you could throw it in there because he was, as you said, a good athlete. Matt Kemp had an RBI single his first time up on the outside corner. It's no balls and one strike. Swing and a miss. On the hands, that was a good pitch from Blatt. Jimmy waited on it and has to hustle the throw over to first for the second out. And so two away. Well, Wheels mentioned it before. Pat Burrell and the rest of the Giants will be in town next Tuesday to start a three-game series. All three games are at 7:05. You can get your tickets now by logging on to Phillies.com. You remember a couple of years ago how important the four-game series was against the Milwaukee Brewers that the Phillies swept out. Well. Brewers were leading the wild card at that time. Giants are leading the wild card now. So those are three important ball games here in Philadelphia. Last time the Phillies will face the Giants during the regular season. Jamie Carroll is the hitter. He singled and drove in a run his first time up, but it's one ball and one strike to Carroll. The time the Phillies did that wild card thing with the. Um, Brewers, they had basically given up on first place with the Mets that year. You know, they, there was no shot, you didn't think. And and then the Brewers came in, what were they up by three or four? Four they were up. Three or four in the wild card, and they swept them. They were up by four and wound up tying them, which was remarkable. And then they overtook the Mets and won the division. Just missed and it's two balls and two strikes. Well, Joe certainly has been in a better rhythm since that first inning. His tempo is pretty good on the mound, too. Part of that is because there haven't been any base runners. Francisco into the alleyway and he legs it out, makes the catch. Side is retired. One, two, three. Go the Dodgers here at the top of the third. We go to the bottom of the third, and the Phillies will have Ibanez, Polanco, and Sweeney. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Budweiser with full flavor and a crisp, clean finish. It's what we do. By Suzuki and the new Kazashi midsize sports sedan. Suzuki, the power of engineering. 
and by Xfinity. It's TV, phone, and internet reinvented from Comcast. Well, the grounds crew had to work extra hard to get the field ready tonight because the field was covered for a good portion of the afternoon. There was some rain in the area. It did rain a little bit. And after they took the tarp off the field, the only thing that was left was the wind, which is still here and blowing out from right to left. As Raul Ibanez leads it off in the bottom of the third. Yeah, they covered it as a precaution and called off batting practice and all here tonight just in case. And it, as you said, it really didn't rain here, but they didn't want to get caught with a tarp off and then, you know, have the field get damaged and then have to spend a lot of time getting it ready afterwards. And so everything worked out fine. And the pregame concert in honor of the Jewish Heritage Celebration at the ballpark went on as scheduled. Yeah, it was like nothing happened here tonight. Just a normal night. Just didn't have batting practice. Actually, two nights in a row because they didn't have it last night on account of the Pal game. One and two, the count to Ibanez. And Raul lays off. It's two and two. Raul lined out to center his first time up. Not only is he hitting 18 straight overall, but he's hitting 12 straight against the Dodgers. So different than the first half of the year. And those are back to back 3 2 counts for Ibanez in this game alone. And that's a clear indication that he's seeing the ball much better. Off a tough left hander, too. Back toward the middle, right off the mound. And that helps Jamie Carroll. Slowed it up a little bit, although he was shaded toward the middle. One away. Well, with one out here in the bottom of the third, it's time for us to remind you that. It's our thirst inning. It's brought to you by Budweiser. It's the official beer of the thirst inning. You think that guy knew he was on camera? Yeah. <laughs> He's ready to toast the camera right yes, there. That's he good was. stuff. One out for Polacco. And a breaking ball over for a strike. Polacco extended his, hit, his hitting streak to 11 games his last time up. He has scored a run in the last three games. In each of the last three. They've had a good approach to Kershaw tonight. You know, they're trying. They're trying to make him throw a lot of pitches, trying to make him run some deep counts. And uh, that's a good way to beat this guy. Because when he gets ahead of you with two strikes, he has put away strikeout stuff, obviously, with those strikeout numbers that he has. All the TV sets in HD now. That shot. Of the green guy coming down the stands is bursting with color. There's definition in that. Well, there's definition, all right. He was doing some stretching with James Loney before the ball game. That was that it was rather entertaining. Pop-up. Shallow right center field. Terrio backpedals, now fights the wind. Oof. That makes the catch. How about that wind? <laughs> Terry would think, man, I'm back at Wrigley Field all of a sudden. <laughs> so I thought I left this win. Well, he did the right thing. He went back to a spot and then ran in. He's laughing too because he's backpedaling, going, Whoop. whoops. Then he kicks up a divot, makes a play. He's got to replace that divot, doesn't he? It's oh, still out there. It's still there, yeah. I don't think he knows he did it. There it is. Yeah. Well, I hope somebody replaces it. It's like a three iron divot, not a wedge. That would be my driver. <laughs> That's not good. Nope. <laughs> Outside, one ball and one strike to Mike Sweeney. Sweeney singled his first time up. Little blooper to right. Looks like Sweeney's going to play more first base, even against right handed pitching, at least for the next couple of days with. Ross glowed on the shelf with that sore groin. Now Ross was not put on the disabled list. Charlie Emanuel said today that and he thinks in the next couple of days Ross could pinch hit. Ross said today that he was going to take some swings. He didn't think he'd be available tonight. He said he'd be kind of a last resort thing. As that's hit in the air behind home plate, Osmus 
Keeps the mask on and he made the catch before the ball hit the net. Mm. That is great concentration by Brad Ospis and the side is retired. One two three go the fills here at the bottom of the third a little defense from a guy who's a three time gold glover. He knows when to push the net out of the way and make the grab. Now more than ever you need technology you can rely on. I'm a Dell Technologies advisor. Ich auch. And if you're a small business, we're with you. We are with you. Estamos com você. We want to help. So we'll be right here. At home. Answering your calls. Providing support. And standing by you. Every step of the way. In today's tough economy, every dollar counts. That's why the Phillies buy office supplies from W.B. Mason for amazingly low prices on office supplies, furniture, cleaning supplies, kitchen snacks, and Green Mountain coffee. Who but W.B. Mason? Well, we go to the fourth here at Citizens Bank Park. Another sold-out crowd. Gary Matthews joins us here in the top of the fourth. The Phillies trail at 3-1. And Sarge, the way this game began, I wasn't sure if uh, what kind of score it would be when you arrived. Well, those three hits in a row, producing those three runs in the first, whatever reason. Joe Blanton having a hard time in the first inning. He seems to settle down, however, after that, and he's been doing just that. Joe threw 38 pitches in the first inning, just 24 in the last two innings. It's all part of that settling down. Now, in all fairness, too, though, it's not like they were really blistering the ball. <laughs> Dodger fan caught the ball. Expecting high five. He got some cheers, but he also got some boos, too. Good catch, though. Oh, we got we have to honor the game. Oh, that was a good catch. Oh, it was. Goes right in the aisle, one hands it. Shows everybody that it was in his glove. Had a stranger take a photo of him. Two and two the count to Brad Osmus. And a line drive caught by Jimmy Rollins. So he was waiting for that to kind of rise up a little bit. It, it never did. So what a way here in the fourth. I ask you this all the time. You know pitchers have a tendency to struggle in the first inning. I don't know why. I mean, you say it's because well, they're mean, not loose. They come. They're coming right out of the bullpen, so they should be loose. But for whatever, whatever reason, even the good pitchers or great pitchers have a tendency to struggle early on. And we would always say, get them early if you can. And guys like Nolan Ryan, J.R. Richard, or even a Sandy Kopech, you want to get them early because after they settle in, they're almost impossible to hit. But uh, for whatever reason, with Joe. He's had some problems. Well, and Joe's tempo has been a whole lot better the last couple of innings as Kershaw shoots that foul down the left field line. Now, a lot of that has to do with the fact that he hasn't had a whole lot of base runners. So your tempo well, does change when you don't have base runners. Well, it does, too. And to his fairness, it wasn't like balls were just hit all over the ballpark, more so in good placement, some jam shots, but they all count. They all count. This guy was a hitter, so <laughs> they would have counted for you. Oh, definitely. Kershaw's down looking. Second strikeout for Blanton. And there are two outs. And here comes Scott Pasednik. Pasednik's two for two. A bloop single in the first, an infield single, his third of the series, his last time up. He's really learned how to be a leadoff hitter. He has excellent speed. And he hits that ball in the hole to shortstop. Just about an automatic base hit. He is running from that left side, but he's really perfected that swing and he tries to keep the ball out of the air. Yeah, Jimmy's shortening up a little bit at shortstop because he's burned him a couple times because uh, balls hit right toward him or to the middle. Look what he's done the series. 
Man, it's been a little bit of a pain in the neck to tell you the truth getting on base and scoring runs. He's been a knack. Well, Joe Blanton has one one two three inning tonight and every time the Phillies retire the opposing team in order Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by the Xfinity triple play your complete lineup for digital TV high speed internet and home phone. An appeal to third Chad Fairchild says no swing. Well that's his game now to get that ball on the ground try and score runs. Lead off hitters you score 100 runs you figure you've had a, a great year. On the hands towards second Valdez hurries the throw. <laughs> Mike Sweeney nearly fell off the bag but the side is retired another one two three inning for Joe Blanton he's retired nine in a row. We go to the bottom of the fourth at a two run game. Phillies baseball is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Lottery. Get your game face on. Play the Pennsylvania Lottery's new Philadelphia Eagles instant game. You must be 18 or older to play. Please play responsibly. By Southwest Airlines. Go to southwest.com. Grab your bag. It's on. And by Toyota. There are many reasons to buy a Toyota. Now's the perfect time to get yours during Toyota's national clearance event. Now we begin the bottom of the fourth. Jason Worth leads it off. Jason line to center his first time up. He hit the ball well. Yeah, this guy's just right over the top. Fastballs. I mean, I'd be looking fastball about every pitch. He hasn't proven to me that he can get that breaking ball over consistently to look for it. And once he does that, then maybe you change your game plan. Kershaw is fifth in the league in strikeouts with 153. Why is that? Well, guys are probably looking for something that they can't really uh, hit. But the, looking at the first few innings, all he's thrown is over the top fastballs. And there's another one. And when you go over the top, it makes it easier to hit not only for left handers, uh, for right handers, but left handers. Not coming from the side and being a little bit scary on that left side. Broke his bat. That's going to be a base hit, though, for Jason. He stayed in there, and the Phils have lead off batter aboard. Hey, Sarge, some good news earlier today. Ryan Howard, his first activities on a field since spraining his ankle, and the big man was moving around pretty good, taking ground balls from Sam Perlazzo. Not only that, Chase Utley took ground balls and threw from second base. I talked to Chase today about. His thumb I said were you happy yesterday that the doctor cleared you to to start hitting a little bit and he said he was and he expected it he said he had feel he had been feeling pretty good and thought they would clear him. So I said you know what are hitting progressions and he said that he'll start to hit off the tee and take it slowly he said he's going to be very cautious because you know he doesn't want to. Hamper his rehab by coming back too soon. Well, that's the key is being cautious, and especially for him because he has that threshold of pain that he can take, and that's just not something you want to mess with and then have that linger on into next year. You want to make sure it's completely well, no matter what. But he has that type of heart that he wants to come back and wants to come back and contribute. One and one the count to Ben Francisco a little toss over. Well, I had never heard the term hitting progressions before and I have come to learn that that's hitting off the tee just taking dry swings which is just you know swinging the bat seeing if that thumb is OK and then progressing to maybe hitting in the cage soft tossing things like that. Well, I think he'll get tested once he gets in and tries to. Check swing on a particular pitch. Can you, know, you practice that? To hold the ball. Well, it's it's not a, it's not like it's game situation. Sure, you can practice just doing it, but in a game situation, you really have a lot of strain on your hands to hold up. All right. Just hope that's his token move. That can't be. His real move that he has. Yeah. 
I would say that's one of the easier moves from a left hander to pick up. Yeah, that's it. He doesn't pick his foot up. At least he hasn't been very high picking it up. More so using that slide step. Breaking ball, cut out and missed. And Francisco's down on strikes. First time tonight that he's thrown consecutive curves to a hitter. And for strikes. Pretty good pitch, however, on the outside part of the plate. Take a look at it. See there, Francisco kind of anticipating in. Hips are gone, and the ball's on the outside part of the plate as opposed to the inside, maybe where he was looking. And with one away, here's Ruiz. Carlos singled his first time up, a little blooper in front of Matt Kemp at center. Wow. There he goes. Pitch is taken low. Osmus has no shot. That was a great jump by Jason Worth. Now almost really pretty easy to, to read there from first base because when he comes home kind of leans going toward the plate. Wasted motion Jason Rith that got a great jump. No no throw at all. Well, we, we had a shot of Chase Utley talking to Cole Hamels and Roy Halliday in the dugout and Chase was kind of mimicking Kershaw's motion. See how he leans right there and then Jason just off to the races. Remember when he was throwing the first base he actually kind of just slid and kind of made his foot go that way. I think that's kind of what what Chase was showing in the dugout not that he relayed that to Jason but I think Jason and Davy Lopes picked up the same thing. Now with David takes Davy just uh, one or two throws to be able to ask the runner why aren't you running. First stolen base in his last 88 and two thirds. That's hard for me to believe. I think part of it too Russell Martin had been pretty good throwing guys out behind the plate. And the slide step from Kershaw. Try to check his swing. They appeal. No swings is Eric Cooper. Two it to the count to Ruiz. Back toward the middle and under the glove of Terrio into center field. Wirtz going to score and the Phillies are within one. Second hit of the night for Carlos Ruiz. It's a 3 2 game. Terrio had no shot to throw Ruiz out at first, even if he got to that ball. What he was frustrated about was that he didn't get to the ball and keep Worth at third. Yeah, trying to keep Worth at third. If he had him actually caught it, he would have done just that. Good things happen, however, when you hit that ball up the middle. Doesn't have to be very hard as it gets right there past Terrio. Didn't have a chance to get that. Jason off to the races. Same as he turns around. That's what I'm saying. A base hit to center, you score. Valdez looked like he wanted to give the Phillies the lead with that swing. Yeah, got to get it down, however, just a little bit. Carlos is two for two. I think if you put a microphone in the dugout right now, Joe Torre and Larry Bowen, and Bob Schaefer, and Dodd Mattingly. Would be saying, how does he do it? He kills us. Well, I mean, he has a short swing. He can hit a fastball. Most of the pitches he's been hitting are fastballs. And he's very short to the ball now. So Tory giving signs whether or not to throw over or not. Or pitch out. Don't think they'll be doing that, however, with Carlos Ruiz there. Now for me again this is a predictable count fastball. You know he's tried to 
mess around a little bit with the, the breaking ball. Just want to make sure that it's down in the zone. Three and one. Another hittable count, predictable count. Well, I mean, this is where he's got two pitches that fastball and curveball. So, I mean, I can't see him throwing a breaking ball now, especially not in danger with a runner in scoring position, even though you do have the pitcher coming up next. And he threw a fastball right down the chute. I mean, that's not even really guessing, that's just almost common sense. Common, you know? ba common baseball sense. Well, common baseball sense is right. I mean, you've seen him so, so long again. And his curveball, though, is slow. It's not that one that really bites down hard in the dirt. So you would have time, I would think, to adjust. I wanted to see if Ruiz would be going on this pitch. I don't think there was any indication there. Charlie would send him with the pitcher on deck. Well, I would think that he would not send him in this situation, just because that pitcher is uh, next. Over towards second, slowly hit. Terrio's got it. There's one. Oh, Carroll was off the bag as he grabbed that, but that happens all the time in baseball. And they get the lead runner. Two outs. And Blanton is due up. Hey, Monday, August 23rd, one of the last opportunities to see the Phillies in the month of August. It's a four game series here at the ballpark. Three night games against the Astros, then the day game. The win streak, Carlos Ruiz, Bobble Figurine. That's free to all fans. You can get your tickets by going to Phillies.com. Still thinking we have a chance to do a bobblehead of you one of these days here, Tom. I would think it would be a last resort, Sarge. I don't think so. There's been uh, broadcasters and several that have had that uh, done. I have a few of them. The Harry and Whitey one. Okay. Latin rolls it to shortstop. And Carroll tosses underhand the second to get Valdez. The side is retired, but the Phillies chip away. They get one more. As we go to the fifth, they've made us a one run game thanks to a base hit by Carlos Ruiz. MLB at Home is presented by Scott's, who knows that some of the best games are played in the backyard. Scott's, grow more good. Larry David and his hilarious brand of humor is coming to my PHL 17. From the guy who brought you Seinfeld, it's curved your enthusiasm. You can catch all the comedy weeknights this fall after Entourage on my PHL 17. Well, top of the fifth, the Phillies have made this a one run game after Joe Blanton allowed the three runs in the first on 38 pitches. The last three innings, he's thrown only 41, and his backstop has two hits, including an RBI single. And right now, he's laughing with Ryan Terrio because Terrio, I think, just said something to him about that bounding ball up the middle that he couldn't get to in the last inning that Ruiz hit. Say, I like that, Sarge. I mean, there's. You know, Ruiz is laughing, knowing that he may have snuck an RBI in there. And he acknowledged that with Terrio. Well, nothing wrong with it, and it's easy to laugh when you're the one that's sneaking the hit through. That's there. what I was thinking. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know there was always some jawing that went on from one team to another. Well, was uh, ours wasn't always that friendly. Okay. Okay. Off the end of the bat, a little flare. That's going to be a base hit for Terrio. First hit of the night for Terrio. Fifth hit in the series. Well, look at that ball. That ball's headed right up the middle, and Terrio said, Man, at least I should have knocked it down. Nickname in Chicago Skates. That's because it was difficult for him to stay on his spikes all the time, even taking early ground balls. Has a tendency to fall down when he was going after even fly balls. Good speed from LSU college that he went to. Here's Andre Ethier, and Ethier lines a base hit to right. Terrio is going to skate his way on to third, and the Dodgers have runners on first and third with nobody out here at the top of the fifth. 
Well, talk about those shutdown innings. And that's what he needs. Ethier, though, good hitter, getting those hands through on a fastball in. This guy's got a pretty nice stroke from the left side. So Blanton looking for a double play or more so a strikeout than a double play. That would kind of fit the bill. Oh, that would be huge. Loney's line to left. He's walked and scored. Oh, he's played the infield at double play depth. Got a breaking ball in there for strike. It's 0 1. So the alignment of the defense. Good pitch. That ball starting off the plate. All set up by that first curveball that he threw that was inside. He got that one called. Joe has progressed nicely since the first. 38 pitches that first inning. Swing and a miss. He got the strikeout. He's a third of the way to your prediction, Sarge. Oh, that's what he needed. And he did it in good fashion there, too. That curveball, then he had a two seamer come back, and this one he just kind of just blew it right by him, right over the top there. See that ball coming in and just in a terrific spot. Just enough sink at the end to miss the bat alone. Now Belliard, he grounded to short his last time up, singled in the first, and he takes a strike on the inside corner. Joe trying to bear down. He's got a great candidate for a double play because Belly Art doesn't run as well as he used to. He bunts and bunts it right in front of the plate. It's a fair ball. Nope, it's a foul ball. Excuse me. Todd Tischer, the whole plate umpire, pointed toward fair territory, but he was pointing down, meaning the ball was foul. And it's 0 2. I don't know if that was a little bit of a safety squeeze or not with Belly Art. Appeared to be the runner was getting ready to come in as he. Hit that bat. It looked like it might have hit that bat twice. Yep, that's why he called a foul. He's got that ball at 93. You can see Joe reaching back a little bit to get that 93. Limited opportunities for Belliard, but he's been successful. The one two pitch. Line drive to left field. Ibanez coming on, makes the catch. Terrio tags from third. The throw to the plate on one hop is not in time. Terrio gets the hand in. And it's a 4 2 game. Boy, that was really close. Good throw by Ibanez. Ruiz trying to block the plate. One hop. That's what you want to do to freeze the runner. Throws that in one motion there as that ball comes in. Boy, I tell you what, it must have just been those fingernails that, well, he got plenty of plate on it, and it was a good call. He Great is slide. Safe. Great slide. Terrio coming in around that uh, plate. Great shot, guys, there. Boy, that just shows you right exactly the way the play was, and he was safe. Carlos had the plate blocked. You know, he was kicking Terrio to the backside of home. So Tishner made a nice call, and Terrio made a great slide. Going to the count to Kemp. Belliard has two RBIs tonight. Well, not a lot of runners would have been able to make that at home. Got to have over above average speed. Can't just be an average runner. And would have made that. Line drive caught by Valdez. Side is retired, but the Dodgers get one more on the sacrifice fly off the bat of Roddy Belliard. But it was really the slide of Ryan Terrio that made that play. Dodgers lead it 4 2.
thanks to all our great fans, all of the available appointments for the Phillies and the American Red Cross Blood Drive this Saturday have been filled. We do encourage that everyone who has scheduled an appointment keeps that appointment, be a part of what could be a record-setting blood donation in the Philadelphia region. Again, that blood drive is Saturday from 6 a.m. till 2 p.m. if you're signed up. And again, if you have an appointment, we want to make sure that you get there. Bottom of the fifth, it's 4-2 Dodgers. And the top of the order is up for the third time against Clayton Kershaw. Kershaw is starting to throw that curve a little bit more. Threw it a few more times last inning. And he starts Jimmy off with a breaking ball here in the bottom of the fifth. Another one. That was a slider. Yep. Curveball and then a slider. Slider would look more like the fastball. But once he starts making those type of pitches, then that's when you have to look for them. And he just brought that out. Jimmy's 0 for 2. He's grounded out and he's popped out of foul territory. And now he's struck out. Frozen on a fastball in the outside corner, one away. I don't like to guess when I have two strikes, and if I am, I'm going to be hard and then adjust. But if you take a fastball like that, it tells me that he's he's looking he's looking for a breaking ball. If you're looking for a breaking ball, there's no way you hit that pitch. It's almost impossible to do. There's some guys that say they can look breaking ball and hit fastball, but I can tell you this, it's not going to be a good fastball. Like that one. Well, he's just throwing strikes now. Well, you got to and you stay with your strength too though as a hitter and you're right about that. And he's breaking had the breaking balls in good spots. Kershaw we mentioned it, is just 22 years old. He's won 23 games in his career. And 10 of those wins have come this year. Last year he was 8 and 8. He had an earned run average of 2.79. The year before he was 5 and 5, an ERA of 4 and a half. I think the first time teams saw Kershaw, they were marveling at his velocity and his composure for somebody who at the time was just 20 years old. Well, he does throw hard. Consistently there from 93 to about 95. But doesn't have that scary hook because that was the one that would come at you and then break away. There's a pop up down the left field line. Belly are the third baseman tracking it with the wind and he makes the catch. Now those fly balls a little bit easier tonight. That wind blowing the ball right back toward the field. Guys flip the ball around. See the way those flags are blowing. Any ball that's hit to that left field side, it just brings it right back and makes it an easy play for any of the fielders. Two away, and Polanco was one for two. He'll stand in. And he swings at the first pitch. Pops it up straight away center. Wynn brings it back for Matt Kemp. That was an easy inning for Clayton Kershaw. Retires the top of the order in order. One, two, three. We've completed five here in South Philadelphia. Our Independence Blue Cross Philly of the Week is Carlos Ruiz. The Phillies catcher is always there on defense, handling his duties behind the plate. Since the All Star break, he turned the offense up two notches and is delivering for the Phillies at the plate. His offensive production has risen in all areas, including clutch hits when his team has needed them the most. And it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. We're here for you every step of the way. On Jewish Heritage Night, it's the amazing bottle dancers and the fanatic. That's what was going on in between innings. Those guys were able to keep those bottles on top of their head the entire time they were dancing and then 
They brought the Fanatic along for the grand finale. And the finale and the Fanatic could fit in with any kind of finale. And the Fanatic did right there. <laughs> we go to the top of the six. Joe Blatton and the Phillies trail at 4 2. Jamie Carroll, Brad Osmus, Clayton Kershaw. Bottom third of the order for Los Angeles. And Joe trying to get through the sixth. And if he has a quick inning, maybe the seventh. And that would be huge considering he threw 38 pitches in the first inning of tonight's ball game. Oh, he's been pretty good, really, up to that uh, point in giving those runs up. You know, still giving his team a chance to win. Not a lot of runs, two runs that they're behind. Over toward third. Oh, skipped quickly to Polanco. One away. So one gone here in the top of the sixth. Sarge, we were mentioning some news around the National League earlier tonight. And I know you were probably watching. We mentioned that Chipper Jones tore his ACL and is out for the year. Yeah, I saw that play. And uh, it didn't look pretty when it happened, but then what he said about it, he heard a pop. That's the scary thing. And not only that, I mean, let's face it, he was getting injured and have been over the last three or four years. There's another player that you just can't replace. Well, that's the thing. If you look at the, the Braves this season, they have been fairly healthy they've had some you know some nicks here and there Chipper Jones has been nicked here and there one and two the count to Osmus but they've been able to play you know, virtually yeah. injury free yeah you know and you're very fortunate as a team if you're able to do just that you know a lot of times you're going to have some injuries Osmus checks his swing they appeal no swing it's two at two yeah, they they had injuries at times to Chipper, as we mentioned. You know, Escobar, who was with them at the time, was on the disabled list. Jason Hayward was on the disabled list. That's a pretty good pitch. It's a ball, three and two. So Charlie wanted that, not saying anything. You can tell by the way that Joe stood out there, like he. Exactly where was that pitch? Over toward the hole, and Osmus has got a base hit. Kind of looks back in again, Tom, there at the umpire. Was well, that what you want me to do? No, Joe can't afford to pitch up high. Half that sinker going, and there's a little smile there by Brad. But we have seen him tonight call balls that have been borderline low. Just want the umpire to stay consistent in whatever zone he has. It's called some low curve balls and, and fastballs. Kershaw bunts, bunts that up the first base line. It's fair, and Ruiz will take care of the out. Up to second goes Osmus. And there are two outs. Now the Washington Nationals will be here on Friday, August 20th to begin a three-game series. The final game is the 22nd of August. That's at 135. It's a ShopRite Cole Hamill's Lunch Bag Cooler. Free to fans 14 and under. It seems only appropriate that with all the work that Cole and his wife Heidi have done in the Philadelphia School District over the last couple of years with the Hamill's Foundation, that ShopRite will sponsor the Cole Hamill's Lunch Bag Cooler. Get your tickets by going to Phillies.com. Might be the Phillies fans first chance to see Steven Strasburg may not be their last chance to see him this year but it might be their first one. Well they've been hitting him around a little bit more now getting used to him that fastball that he throws. Plus with all the height there's so many teams that really just get up for him as another pitch is. Pretty close to the zone, not being called. And now it's three and zero to Posednik. 
I tell you, Tom, those balls aren't aren't that bad of pitches. That might have been a little bit inside, but balls were almost right down the middle. The pitchers just can't afford to throw the ball right down the middle when you don't have that explosive fastball. You got to work on the edges. There's ball four, and Posednik draws a walk. Rich Duby, I think, is going to head over to the phone and get somebody up and loosening just because the middle of this order is due up yeah, after Terrio. Excuse me, Tom, you're right about that. And 109 pitches so far. They don't go. Chad Durbin warming up, but they don't throw many more after that 109, 110 pitches or so. Side. One ball and one strike to Terrio, who's one for three. Scored on the sack fly the last time he was on base. Mr. Lowe, two and one. Just trying to get him to fish a little bit at that breaking ball. He's don't want to come predictable with his fastball, even though he's had some sink on it here this last several innings. This is the guy you want because you have Ethier and Loney do up next. And although Terrio is a pretty good contact hitter with 30, 36 multi hit games, Ethier, who's on deck, and Loney, those are, their, those are the RBI guys for the Dodgers. And those are the guys that will be able to hit that ball out of the ballpark. Terrio, not known as a home run hitter. Well, you want to make sure that you. Throw him a strike and only one today. Three and one, the count to Terrio. On the outside corner, they throw behind Pasenic and it goes by Sweeney. Over to third goes Ausmus. That's it, though. Backed up by Francisco and Wilson Valdez. It'll be an error charge to Ruiz. That's his fifth of the year. And the error allows Osmus to go over to third. Yeah, just trying to help out Joe and be able to maybe get an out over at first base. You know, a clean throw, and because Sweeney blocked the blocked the bag, they would have had him. No doubt about it, doing a great job in blocking the bag. He's put his whole body in front of him. So runners on first and third, three and two the count. Posednik will be off and running on this pitch. I don't think Sweeney should be a little bit deeper than what he is. It's just right behind that runner. Runner goes, ball four. The bases are loaded. Back to back walks to the leadoff hitter and the number two batter. And here comes Andre Ethier. Charlie Manuel is coming out to the mound. Gum goes aside. It's probably going to be it for Joe Blatt. 115 pitches. His career high pitches is 124. And Chad Durbin's already been summoned from the pen. So we've got a pitching change here at the top of the six. Two outs. Bases loaded. The Phillies trail it by two. And this is a very important point. In this ball game, Joe Blanton's night is done. Let's see what Chad Derby could do when we return. Well, the Phillies trail at 4-2 with two outs here in the top of the six. The bases are loaded, and Chad Durbin coming into the ball game after Joe Blanton patted on the back by Roy Halladay. He seems like he's heated at the home plate umpire Todd Tishner. Yeah. Partly because of the at bat to Scott Pasednik, yeah, in which Pasednik wound up walking. That's why he's just staring at him. I mean, he didn't want to. Do that coming off of the field and showing the guy up, but clearly for me, 
there were several pitches that could have been called strikes. Well now it's Durbin in his 42nd game. Phillies only have one left hander in the bullpen and that's J.C. Romero. Yeah. And you have two lefties due up in Andre Ethier and James Loney. Well for me this would be the time to have the left hander in there and pitching because you have those two guys that can hit that ball out of the ballpark right now you want to keep that score exactly where it is. That is Charlie's option to have that but then for Charlie he's got to have faith in that pitcher that he's going to come in and throw strikes. And to be quite frank J.C. Romero just doesn't do that or hasn't done it consistently. So Durbin throws a strike to Ethier and it's no balls in one strike. You see his numbers with the bases loaded. He has Auspice at third, the Sednik at second, and Terrio at first. Two down here in the top of the sixth. Fastball a little low and it's one and one. See Durbin has stranded eight of the 11 inherited runners this year over towards second base he's going to get out of it Valdez has got it throws to first a nice job by Chad Durbin the righty getting the lefty that bails out Joe Blanton at least for the time being the Dodgers strand the base is loaded as we go to the bottom of the sixth now more than ever you need technology you can rely on. I'm a Dell Technologies advisor. Ich auch. And if you're a small business, we're with you. We are with you. Estamos com você. We want to help. So we'll be right here. At home. Answering your calls. Providing support. And standing by you. Every step of the way. Phillies baseball is brought to you by McDonald's. Try McDonald's new Angus snack wraps. Everything you love about the Angus burgers in a wrap, just $1.99. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Buy your local Dodge dealers and buy WB Mason. Who but WB Mason for amazingly low office product prices. Bottom of the six, the Phillies trail it by two. An important sequence of events took place in the top of the six because the Dodgers had the bases loaded. And had the heart of their lineup due up, and Phillies were able to get out of that jam, so they've kept it at a two run game. Chad Durbin came on to get the out in the top of the sixth in place of Joe Blanton. He got Andre Ethier to ground out to second. And here's Mike Sweeney. Sweeney's one for two. And he pops the first pitch back and out of play. A little bit late on that fastball. But again, too, that situation, Tom, it looks like that's who Charlie feels confidence with and bringing in Chad, a guy he knows that probably won't walk a batter. But again, very dangerous because uh, he can hit that ball out of the ballpark, but he got him out. And he's probably going to pitch the seventh. Unless his spot comes up here in the bottom of the sixth. There's a breaking ball that's hit foul by Sweeney. And it's one and two. Mike Sweeney for his career, 1,532 hits. 213 home runs. I mean, that's a career. Oh, no. He's had a great career. You know, he's playing with. Kansas City most of his career. It's that hard towards short. And Carroll to his right has it. One away. So one away here at the bottom of the six from Citizens Bank Park here in Philadelphia. Along with Gary Matthews. I'm Tom McCarthy. It's the final game of a three game series between the Phillies and the Dodgers. Not the last time that these two will face each other this month the Phillies will head to Los Angeles head to Southern California and play a series against the Dodgers the Padres and then the Colorado Rockies for one the Dodgers are the last team for the Phillies to face here in 2010 they faced everybody else prior to this series. J. 
Jason's one for two. Eight game hitting streak. Thanks to a single in the fourth. He stole second and scored on a base hit by Ruiz. Well, it's been no secret how he's trying to get you out with those fastballs. Looked like that gentleman had the assumption that Polanco would bat second and Ibanez would bat third before coming to the ball game today. Yeah, well, that's why you do it in pencil. Like I've that. done that before. <laughs> I know what he's feeling. You know, and I always do mine in ink, and that's what Harry used to always say you ought to do it in pencil because it's usually going to be some changes, and especially if you're with the St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> Tony LaRusa has a habit of always doing this as he swings through a breaking ball there just getting a little foul tip as Brad gets hit again one well, of those catchers take a beating over the course of a year a lot of foul tips outside two balls and two strikes yeah, that's what I was talking about how slow that curveball comes where a hitter gets a chance to take a good look at it and as long as he's not pulling off you usually can kind of foul it off. Checked his swing. They appeal. Oh, he went around, says the first base umpire, Eric Cooper. And he's tagged out to finish off the strikeout. Just the third strikeout of the night for Kershaw. I have to admit, naked eye, seeing it for the first time, I didn't think he went. Well, yeah, that, I thought he did go on that third time. Did you? It was a fastball yep. as he gets out. I mean, a slider. That's that hard slider. That's the toughest pitch. For a right-handed batter with a left-hander throwing at the layoff of, because you're thinking it's a fastball and you're trying to get out there on it, even though it was low and it had that hard break on it. That's a great shot right there because you can see him sort of break his wrist. Yeah. Go to the top of the plate. Here's Francisco, and he hits it in the air to left center field. On the run is Pesednik and Kemp. The wind brings it back a little bit, and he makes the catch, and the side is retired. So just like that. Clayton Kershaw's retired the last eight batters he's faced. He'll take us to the seventh with the Dodgers leading at 4 2. Well, that Ryan Terrio slide has turned out to be a pretty big play because it's given the Dodgers a two run lead as we go to the top of the seventh. Chad Durbin, though, worked out of a bases loaded jam in the top of the sixth, and now he'll face James Loney to begin the seventh. And Loney hits that foul, and it's no balls and two strikes. Okay, he did a great job coming in pitching to Ethier, and Ethier had, had beaten him with a walk off home run last year at Dodger Stadium on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, so, you know, Charlie just felt he was. Better equipped at that point to get him out than the other right hander in the game, the starter Joe Bland. One and two, the count to Loney. I think the key to that at bat was the fact that he worked ahead of Ethier through that first pitch breaking ball over for strike. On the hands, a little looper at to center. That's going to be a base hit for Loney. So Loney's aboard for the second time tonight. And Jason threw behind him. And here is that Verizon wireless game summary. They got three runs in the first inning to the Dodgers with two outs on three straight RBI singles. And uh, then Joe Blanton, the Phil starter, knocked in a run with an RBI ground out. Carlos Ruiz, uh, we talked about it earlier, he does hit the Dodgers. He's two for two tonight with an RBI and scored a run. Clayton Kershaw, you know, they look like they had him on the ropes there for a while. And to his credit, he's come back and shut him down the last few innings. And he's gone away from throwing the fastball. I mean, he's thrown it, but not as much as he threw it the first few innings. Kershaw's starting to throw more breaking pitches and more, more curves, more sliders, and that seems to have kept the Phillies off balance the last couple of innings. And it looks like he's got another inning in him. Roddy Belliard takes a high fastball, and it's one and zero. Yeah, they can shorten the game. Uh, with, that's with the real strong point of the Dodgers with Quo and Broxton, and uh, you know they're an in inning away from that. If they, uh, you know, if they get you out in the seventh, they, 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 a lot of times will go Quo in the eighth and Broxton in the ninth, and uh, see you next time. 
Runner goes, pitches lofted in the air, shallow left center, backing up his J roll. He's got it, and his throw to first on a few hops, not in time to get Loney. And what away. Oh, these lucky fans are tonight's Citizen Seven. They will each receive a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Citizens Bank with the most seven day branches in the Philadelphia area. To find a branch near you, visit citizensbank.com. One away, and Matt Kemp is the batter. Kemp singled home run his first time up. Hitless in his last two at bats. And he hits one of the air deep to left field. That one is into the 10th or 11th row of seats. A two run home run. And just like that, it's a 6 to 2 ball game. 19th home run of the year for Kemp. He now has 66 runs batted in. Yeah, he's really been struggling too. And he threw him a fastball, looked like middle in. And oh, that wind is blowing so hard to left field. That thing kind of went clunk and went way out. And you worried about that with Kemp earlier in the game with some men on that he might get one up. See it come running right back in. And he's pulling off anyway because he's struggling so much. And you know with that pull off swing that he has right there that was right where he can handle it. So the home run for Kemp makes this a four run game. Here's Jamie Carroll. Oh for a guy that's struggling. He set himself a pretty good night. He's two for four with three RBIs. Well, all you have to know about how he's struggling. This is the first game in the series he started. That is true. And there are a lot of people who weren't even sure he'd start tonight. No, that's he's just been he's been deep into Bow Wow Palace. Tough to get into Joe Torrey's Bow Wow Palace. You got to work at it, and he has managed to do it. I would think uh, as tough as it is to get into Joe Torrey's doghouse, it's probably even tougher to get out of it. You better hit your way out. And that's a start. I don't remember how Tory was as a manager with the, the Mets or the Braves. He was certainly different with those teams than he was with the Cardinals and with the Yankees. But one thing that he established when he was with the Yankees is that he was a player's manager. And it, you know, even listening to him talk to the media before a ball game, I mean he still has that. You know that same kind of personality where he defends the players and it does it. I think better than anybody in his pregame conversations. He's very good at it. He, he's Joe keeps an even keel quite well, which is you know, and I know a lot of fans don't like that. They want the manager to be ranting and raving and yelling at people and you know that kind of thing. It doesn't work nowadays. It, it just it's not going to play. You know, today's athlete, if you browbeat them, they'll quit on you. A lot of them. I don't mean quit, but they'll just kind of, eh, you know, I don't need this. I'll go somewhere else. So, you know, you really have to have that ability to do those things you were talking about. There's a stolen base there. And Charlie's very good at that, too. I he agree. doesn't beat on them. I mean, he'll talk to them when he has to and discipline them. But, uh, you know, if you stay after them all the time, they'll tune you out. Well, I, I think they're, so, they're somewhat similar, Joe Torrey and Charlie Manuel and their styles and the way that they, they handle the players. Very much so. That stole base for Carroll is eighth of the year. And the pitch to Ospis is outside, one ball and one strike. Six to two Dodgers here at the top of the seventh. On the inside corner, called strike three. So Osmus is rung up, and that'll bring Clayton Kershaw to the plate. Kershaw's 0 for 2, has a sacrifice bunt tonight. And a slider in there for strike one.
This will be Durbin's last inning. He's due to bat third in the bottom of the seventh. And with the home run by Matt Kemp, the, the two run shot, he's going to need a little pop in that pitcher's spot to come back in this game. Everybody moved. <laughs> it wasn't called a strike. Even the home plate umpire moved a little bit. Over to shortstop. Jimmy moves to his left in a few steps. He's got it, and the side is retired. So the Dodgers get two more runs on a two run bob by Matt Kemp. It's his 19th of the year. He has three RBIs tonight. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Nice catch in the first row by a fan. Another one, another lifetime memory. And you get a memory, and you get a memory, yeah. and you get a memory. Beautiful sign and a beautiful night. And a souvenir for that young man in the first row. Wow, yes. he caught it with his bare hand. Oh. Awesome. That's priceless. Time now for the Dodge Stump the Fans Trivia Quiz Answer. Wheels, who is the only pitcher to win the Rookie of the Year, the Cy Young Award, and the Silver Slugger Award in the same season? How about the great Fernando? You would be correct. 1981. Fernando, Fernando Valenzuela. He uh, arrived on the scene and did so with a huge splash, kind of like a cannonball. Phillies threw the first loss on him. Yep. Casey Blake takes over there to play third. Yeah, they. They beat him out at Dodger Stadium. Mike Schmidt hit a home run off him. It was that was a fun night, Tom, because Fernando was just the talk of the sport, and the Phillies went out there and got him that night. Well, and it was all the talk too about Pete Rose and everybody else saying, "Hey, listen, we want that guy." They did. Yep. Oh, they did. There were a lot of veterans on the. They were a year removed from the World Series. That team was that 81. 81. Yeah. Uh, so you know there were a lot of good players on that team. Log back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. Thanks for playing. Dodge stump the fans. Had the strike that year, and uh, there's Pete Rose jersey. And the Dodgers, of course, um, wound up winning. Uh, they went to the World Series. They beat Montreal. Phillies and Montreal played in that split set, awful split series. Right. Split season series, and then the Dodgers. Rick Monday hit the home run on a Monday off Rick off uh, Steve Rogers. And they went to the World Series and they beat the Yankees. Yeah, and they, they had lost to the Yankees in 77 and 78. And obviously, the history of the Yankees and the Dodgers was pretty thick with losses for the Dodgers. Right, and they shouldn't have been in there in 77. We showed that last night. <laughs> Wheels, uh, Davy said it's time to move on. I can't. Sorry, oh. I was here that day. Just telling you, he said it's time to move on. Can't do it. <laughs> He's great, isn't he? He's so much fun to be around. He doesn't look like it when you look at him. Yeah, you threw him out. You know you did. Taking a look at Bo in the dugout. Ruiz fouls it off. It remains two balls and two strikes. That'll be one of the, uh, in the in the history of this franchise. That'll be one of the top ten plays, I would think, for better or worse. Did a great job showing it the other night. You know Don Newcomb. I think Don Newcomb won. Uh, Ruiz golfs it to left and Pesednik makes the grab. Nuka may have been rookie of the year and the MVP the same year. Like in the late 40s. And yeah, that's some research. Not going to go there, but figured how to be Fernando was the, was the answer tonight. I don't know if they gave out the silver slugger, though, right. did they? I don't know. Probably didn't, but I, I think Nuke, like 48 or 49, may have won both awards. He was, and you know what? Back in those days, he could have won the silver slugger, too. I was what thinking a the same great thing. hitter that guy was. Still alive and living in Los Angeles. It looks great. Looks great. We see him at Dodger Stadium once in a while. And great man. The great interaction is watching him, watching him walk around the, the batting cage because he's always wearing a really sharp hat. And watch Sarge walk around <laughs> with the same you know kind of style. <laughs> and those two guys interacting. Well Tom Newcomb still is one of those guys I look at in awe. Hundredth pitch of the night for Clayton Kershaw and Valdez fouls it back. It's 0 2. 6 to 2 Dodgers here in the bottom of the seventh. Three in the first, one in the fifth, two in the seventh. And for the Phillies, single runs in the second and the fourth. And they have some work to do. Look out. 
There was a vendor vendor 178 right there was doing his job making sure that the the patrons were refreshed and that ball was headed right toward his backside. Yeah. That one would have hurt. Swing and a miss. That ball was in front of the plate. Osmus applies the tag. And Valdez is rung up. How about this reaction? Jade Victorino returned for the disabled list today, a day earlier than expected. After tearing things up down at AAA, Rick Huddy cuts out to the mound and talks to Clayton Kershaw. With Hong Chi Kuo loosening up in the bullpen. Phillies thought they would activate Shane before tomorrow's ball game against the Mets. There's Kuo. I said to Shane, I said, how did it go? And Lehigh Valley said, went really good. He said, the only issue is that I didn't hit, hit left handed at all. He said, all I faced were left handers. Yeah, we were saying that last night. It seemed like every replay we saw of him, he was batting right handed. Well, he said there was a point where he thought about going up left handed just to make sure he was healthy. As J.C. Romero loosens up in the pen for the Phillies. He said they discussed it. And I guess uh, when he says they, he means the coaching staff at Lehigh Valley, and they decided it would be better to stay, you know, righty against lefty. Lines one down the left field line, and it's two and one. The only thing Rick Honeycutt's talking to uh, Kershaw about at this point is, hey, get through this inning. And you did your job, and you know you know who has the eighth and ninth with our club when we're ahead like this. And that's what they try to do is short the game this way. There's Rick Honeycutt. Good change up. This guy's really dealing it. You know, since the fifth inning, fourth inning, it's been nothing. Up and down, up and down. Ten consecutive batters, including the uh, the two fielders' choice to finish the fourth. Ball four. That breaks that string, and Victorino's aboard. Well, Shane is the first of the set of trios the Phillies have on the disabled list to come off. It was his first at bat since the 27th of July. And you expect him in order to be Shane and then Ryan Howard and then Chase Utley right. would be the third guy. Chase really watches the game anyway, but you know in the back of his mind he's thinking, I'm going to be facing that Kershaw because I'll be playing when the Phillies are in Los Angeles at he the end could. of the month. Yep. Brad Osmus out to talk to Kershaw. And even though Kershaw is a left-handed pitcher, you get the feeling that if Jimmy were to get on here, they'd go to quote a pitch to Ibanez because Raul's hit some balls hard off him tonight. And the way the wind's blowing out to left field, you get one up there, game gets close real fast. One ball, no strikes the cow to Jimmy. Takes a fastball for strike one. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Twins lead the White Sox 3 1 in the bottom of the fourth. Orlando Hudson, he's missed some time this year, a couple hits, a home run. Rollins dragged that one toward third. Victorino was. Victorino started then stopped. What and two the count. Outside, two balls and two strikes. By the way, we showed that, that Minnesota Chicago score, winner of that game tonight. 
will take over first place in the Central. Oh boy. Almost got picked off. He was a little delayed getting back to first. Well, this guy has a really good move. You don't get many stolen bases on him. You saw the one Jason Worth. Guy. By the way, Newcomb, Don Newcomb was rookie of the year in 49. MVP Cy Young Award winner in 56 for Colton. So he won all three, but not in the same year. Right. Another toss over. He's worried about Victorino right now. You talk about you know kind of a meaningless situation. Yeah, they're the pickoffs that he has. He has a good move. He it's didn't really show it. He didn't show it earlier when Worth was on first. Jason was picking up that move pretty easy. And they wound up stealing. Victorino goes, pitches taken high, no throw, and Victorino's in scoring position. That was an awfully close pitch. So it's full three and two. And they're pretty much just letting him go right there because he even used a slide step and Osmus didn't even think about throwing. Banyas waiting on deck. The Fanatic's getting impatient. Got to change the signs, Fanatic. <laughs> Ball four. And the Phillies have two aboard. That may be it for Clayton Kershaw. Rick Honeycutt's going to go to the fall to make sure everybody's ready in the bullpen. And we said even though Kershaw is a left-handed pitcher, he's going to he's going to bring Quo into Facey Banyas because home run here and it's it's six five. No move yet, but Osmus is going to buy some time. There's the call, and Honeycutt says, "Yep, he's ready." And Joe Torrey's coming out to the mound. So that'll be it for Clayton Kershaw. He's going to be credited with six and two thirds. You can't close the line on him just yet because the two runners on are his responsibility. Back to back walks as he's tired a little bit here in the seventh. He still has a four run lead, but the Phillies' hottest hitter, or one of the Phillies' hottest hitters, Raul Ibanez is due up. So that's it for Clayton Kershaw. Hang Chi Kuo is going to be next up for the Dodgers here at the bottom of the seventh with two outs and two on. You know the folks at IBEW Local 98 they always have great giveaways here at Citizens Bank Park and another one's coming up on Sunday September 5th when the Phillies wrap up a series against the Brewers. It's the Jimmy Rollins T-shirt free to fans 14 and under. Get your tickets for the three games against the Brewers by going to Phillies.com. Oh, the Phillies trail at 6 2. Clayton Kershaw's evening is done. His current line 6 and 2 thirds, 6 hits, 2 walks, 4 strikeouts. He hasn't allowed a hit though since the 4th. He's just walked his first 2 of the night. And that's why he was lifted from this game. And Hang Chi Kuo was brought on. Kuo, lefties are hitting just uh, 0 70 against him. And he's on to try to get Rolly Bynes. And Bynes has one of the hits that went right through the wickets on it in the game last night. Uh, and they said that's the hardest base hit off him, off him of the three that he's given up this year. So that's why Joe went to him. Well, Raul's 0 for 3 tonight. And that first pitch nearly hit him. Torrey's basically saying if I'm going to get beaten by a left handed hitter here, it's going to be by a left handed pitcher and a left handed hitter. It's going to be quo against Ibanez. And nothing against Clayton Kershaw. They have Belisario loosening up as well in the pen. In the air to left center field, not that deep. The Sednik started back. Now he comes in, makes the catch, and the side is retired. So the Phillies strand two here in the seventh. Hang Chi Kuo gets the only batter he needs to in relief of Clayton Kershaw. We go to the eighth. Phillies baseball is brought to you by the Quality Plus Four dealers. Buy Southwest Airlines. Go to Southwest.com. Grab your bag. It's on. And buy your participating Philadelphia area Chevy dealers. Visit ChevyDealer.com. Well, we go to the eighth here at Citizens Bank Park. And J.C. Romero is the new pitcher for the Phillies. He'll take over and face the top of the order. Scott Pasednik. And he delivers a fastball for strike. Well, Romero just needs a clean inning. He just needs to get, get some people out, throw some strikes, and get to the point where they can use him and uh, he'd be effective. 
Forty first game for Romero. He's really struggled the last few outings. He's all over the place. You know that's. And in the role that he's in, you cannot do that. You know, you can't walk people. Or if you do, it's going to be a problem. On the hands that he's ahead, one ball and two strikes. The other night when JC came into the ball game, you know, he struggled. And after the game, he sort of alluded to the fact that his arm was not right. Well, the next day he came back and said, that his arm was fine. He was still trying to figure some things out. Charlie said before yesterday's ball game that man, he didn't know that there was anything wrong with JC and didn't think there was. And you know, as it turns out, JC was just a it seemed like he was just a little uncomfortable after the game the other night and was just searching for some things. And the chopper slowly hit right side. Sweeney tried to make it happen quickly. And he boots it. That's going to want to be a base hit for Pesednik. Guys like Juan Pierre. Well, he gets all these infield hits. Now they charge an error to Sweeney. Well, it's a tough I'm, error. I don't think he's going to get him, is he? He may have if he fielded it and did sweep as well, fast as he was trying to. There. I mean, he was trying to get it there quickly. Yeah, I think about the runner when he scored that play, right? I pity. Here's Ross Glode. Ross has played well defensively in place of Ryan Howard. Terrio's the hitter. And Terrio takes a fastball for strike one. Think about a guy like Scott Pesednik. We don't see him that often. He's been in the American League the last few years. Saw him for a time when he was in the National League early in his career. But he's the kind of guy if you don't see all the time and then you see him for a series like this and he's been on base eight or nine times you're thinking well he'd be a good extra man to pick up. Well that's what I was saying earlier wonder why he moves around as much as he does. But you know you have to see a guy for a long period of time to get a better feel. You know for a player and, and his strengths and weaknesses but when he first came up. In the National League with Milwaukee, boy, he exploded with those guys with that speed. He had a little power. Had some good years for the Brewers. One and one, the count to Terrio. And an off-speed pitch is hit down the right field line and out of play. Two hundred fifty-seven stolen bases among the leaders in the. The majors since 04. Now he's among the leaders with 257, but he had a, a couple years where he wasn't he wasn't really that good. He wasn't really playing every day or getting on base. Right. Didn't he hit a walk-off home run in the World Series against the Astros? I gotta look it up. I think he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he, he did. He did. The White he? Sox. The yep. right center field. Yep. When when he was with the White Sox and he beat the Astros in a World Series game. This was the ones you think about anything. I don't know. In the air to right field, Francisco is there to make the catch. And there's one away. Hey, you remember when he did it? Kind of harkened back to the 83 series when Rick Dempsey had such a good year or good postseason. And 84 when Kurt Bavakwa had such a good postseason for the Padres. All those strange names that just emerged. <laughs> During the fall classics that, you know, had good years but were never really star players. Yeah, he, 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 right. I mean, World Series will do that. You never forget Gene Tennis, what he did in that one World Series against the Reds. Which one of the Doyle brothers in the 70s? Brian? Well, uh, that was Brian. Brian for the Yankees. Yep. Yeah, Denny was here. Right. Saw Denny last week. Yeah, he was here for the reunion last week. Fastball for a strike, and it's one ball and one strike. After not homering during the 2005 that's what it was. season, that's what it was. Pesednik hit two postseason right. homers, including a walk off in game two off Brad Lidge. Hmm. It was only the 14th in World Series history at the time.
Line drive over the glove of Valdez and it's a right center field. The Sednik, he was frozen at first, so he'll stop at second. I think he thought and Valdez thought that Wilson was going to catch it. Let's see where this goes. Just wow. over his glove. And that's what happens when you have to cheat for a double play like that. You know, he's up a little further. You have some speed at first, a little bit of speed. Uh, you know at home plate at Terrio and uh, you can just get one over his glove like that. 32nd two hit game for Ethier second one of the series. Six for 13 in the series. So the Dodgers have two aboard with one away here in the top of the eighth. with 70 RBIs the leader for the Dodgers this year his hit tonight gave him 125 hits on the season A healthy Manny Ramirez and Russell Martin. Where would you back this guy? Hmm. Well, and if Matt Kemp was, you know, having the year he had last year, he wouldn't be the cleanup hitter, would he? No. No. I, and and Ethier's probably the three-hole hitter. Right. Maybe sixth. I mean, he's obviously had the ability to drive runs in, so you wouldn't bat him second. Although you could. But. I was thinking that too. It was probably down in the six hole. Whacked that one off his leg, and it remains one ball and two strikes. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Marlins have gotten underway against the Nationals. They lead it two nothing in the bottom of the second. Mike Stanton, well, he's raring to go again. A two run home run. He has hit in six straight at bats. He likes that Nationals park, huh? I guess so. And their pitching staff. They had a, an hour and 57 minute rain delay. Swing and a miss. Loney's down on strikes. Two away. Hey, if you're 30 years old or older, here's your chance in a lifetime. That's January 19th through the 23rd next year in Clearwater. It's Phillies Fantasy Camp. The package includes hotel accommodations, a fantasy game versus the legends at Bright House Field. A Phillies uniform and so much more. Call 610 520 3400. Don't forget, space is limited, so hurry and make your reservations today. Well, Charlie Manuel with the right hander due up will go get the righty Jose Contreras. We have, we have a pitching change here in the top of the eighth. Dodgers lead it 6 2, two aboard with two outs. Charlie's getting the baseball ready for Jose Contreras. He'll be the next pitcher for the Phils when we return. With the Dodgers on top by four with two outs here at the top of the eighth Jose Contreras needs to get Casey Blake and get out of this inning. It's the 48th ball game for Jose six and three a three point four zero earned run average. Casey Blake who came on to play third in the bottom of the seven batting for the first time. He came on for Ronnie Belliard had a good night Belliard a couple RBIs. Joe Blanton started the game and Joe went five and two thirds he allowed four runs and eight hits he walked four. Then Chad Durbin J.C. Romero and now Jose Contreras who's on with two aboard. And a line drive towards center here comes Jason Worth he has to play it on a hop. But is going to score easily going to third Ethier the throw on one hop not in time. An RBI single, it's 7 2 Dodgers. Jason hesitated just a little bit, and that gave Ethier a clear path to go to third. He did a nice job getting to that ball on one hop. 
Because it was sinking fast. Yeah, it was. It was coming down in a hurry, and he, he's in between a little bit right there and catching it and trying to make sure he blocks it. You know, he blocks it, he catches it. That was good base running by Ether. I mean, he's two outs. He's running at the crack of the bat, so he's able to go to third. Well, now Kemp will hit, but you better make it because that would be the third out at third base. And never a good thing. They probably won't use Quo now, I would think. Now with a five run, I don't know. Wind blowing out. Now with a five run lead, they, they may go to somebody else in the eighth. And I don't know if they even use Broxton now. Yeah, Belisario's been loosening up in the bullpen. Camp didn't run as that ball drops in for a base hit. He'll still get an RBI single as Ethier scores. Blake goes to third. It's 8 2 Dodgers. He thought it was foul. Well, Kemp has three hits tonight. He's hit a home run and two jammers. And he has four RBIs. And now the inning's kind of blowing up on the fills. Yeah, there it is. He runs a fastball in, a good pitch. Kemp stands there and watches it. Ball's 10, 15 feet fair. The wind kind of blew it back. He closed the line on J.C. Romero. The two runs that have scored in the inning are his responsibility, although they're Aaron inher inherited runners for Contreras. And Jamie Carroll's the batter. And they're unearned. Unearned because of the error charge to Sweeney to start the inning on the ball hit by Pacendi. Thirty one hits for the Dodgers in game one ends here in game three. Farron will pick that up and make that youngster a happy guy. Over toward the hole, Polanco can't get it. Jimmy can't get it. Another run scores. Nobody's at third. Now Polanco is there, and so is Kemp, and he's safe. An RBI for Carroll. It's 9 2 Dodgers. Well, the ball looked like Polanco was going to catch it. The sinker, fastball, and it goes under his glove right there. I thought he had gotten there, and just under his glove right there. And now it goes into the outfield, and everybody's running for the ball. Nobody's at third base, and uh, it's good base running by Kemp. Auspice, the eighth man to bat in the inning for the Dodgers. They batted around in the first. Eight men come to the plate here in the eighth. It's 9 2 LA. They've scored five runs the last two innings. Swing and a miss. It's 0 2. Two more in scoring position. Well, you know, Joe Blanton gave up four, but the two games they've lost, and this, or one they've lost, and one they're in danger of losing they, the bullpen's given up a lot of runs. Auspice tries to hold. He went, says the first base umpire Eric Cooper of the side is retired. Three runs score in the inning, all three runs unearned because of the error to Mike Sweeney to start the eighth. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Matt Kemp for the Dodgers, lead it by seven. MLB at Home is presented by Scott's, who knows that some of the best games are played in the backyard. Scott's, grow more good. One of the hottest shows on TV is coming to my PHL 17. Catch Jeremy Pivot in the acclaimed comedy series Entourage, where the day to day life of a Hollywood actor is anything but ordinary. Weeknights this fall on my PHL 17. Well, this was a two run game. Just a couple innings ago. Now all of a sudden the Dodgers have stretched their lead to seven. The Phillies have gotten it from three nothing at the start of the game to three to two. It looked like it was going to be a pretty good game tonight. But uh, nope, not to be. 
And now Ronald Belisario comes on to pitch in his 37th ball game. One win, one loss, an ERA of 3.93. Just his second game since coming off the restricted list. He pitched in game one of the series between the Dodgers and the Phils. After the ball game, the Phillies will head to New York. They'll play three games up at City Field against the Mets beginning tomorrow night. And then it's right back here. An off day on Monday. And they're right back home. We mentioned at the start of this homestand, 16 of 19 here at Citizens Bank Park. And if the Phillies wind up losing tonight, well, they would, you know, begin that stretch three and three. Polanco leads it off here in the bottom of the eighth. Polanco's one for three. And a fastball for a strike. Side and Pollock goes ahead, two balls and one strike. You know, I mentioned before all the news that was going on in the National League today with Chipper Jones with his torn ACL. Francisco Rodriguez suspended two games by the Mets for allegedly assaulting his father in law. And Major League Baseball also handed down its suspensions and fines from that Reds Cardinals brawl from the other night. A foul ball, and it's two and two. Johnny Cueto. Was suspended for seven games by Major League Baseball. Now that's significant because, you know, a lot of times you'll see a pitcher suspended for five games, which means he misses just one start. You know, although Cueto will miss just one start again, it's two extra games. And then there were fines for Chris Carpenter, Yadier Molina, Brandon Phillips, Russ Springer, and for both managers. Polanco lines one to center, a base hit. And to Arusa, start the Arusa and uh, Dusty Baker get two games suspension right. too, and managers don't appeal. They have to start them right away, so they're both off tonight. So they will miss two games. A leadoff single for Polanco. He has two hits tonight, and that'll bring Mike Sweeney to the plate. Outside corner with a 93 mile an hour fastball. It's 0 1. It off and it's 0 2. Mentioned earlier that Sweeney's played first base tonight, will probably play first base the next couple of nights while Ross, Ross Glode recuperates from the groin strain. That one's back toward the middle, another base hit. As Sweeney moves Polanco up to second, two aboard here in the eighth for the Bills. I think a lot of people were surprised after seeing the kind of pain Ross Claude was in last night that the Phillies hope that next couple of days he might be able to pinch it. I know I was. Got here today, and there's Ross. And I uh, saw Charlie and uh, said, you know, you're going to have to DL Glode. He said, I don't think so. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, Glode already was, talked about it. Glode was pretty optimistic about yeah. it. Thought he could pinch hit in a few days. But it, that looked nasty last night. He's a last resort, he said tonight. And he said that would be determined on how he would swing earlier today. Well, they have an off day Monday, too, so you know you could conceivably see him getting through the whole weekend. 
and not play and then be ready to be used on Tuesday with the Met or when the Giants come to town. Off the glove of Ausmus, the runners move up. Polanco to third and Sweeney to second. Now yeah, they scored that. That caught a lot of leather, but he really had a reach for it. They scored a wild pitch to Belisario. Yeah. You can see it hit the glove, but in the mention he really had a reach for a wild pitch. They're just trying to walk work Belisario back into their bullpen so they can use him and be effective. Get him some work here. And now the game blew open to seven. It didn't stay where it was. Quo was going to pitch the eighth inning. Well, they start to stir out the Dodgers bullpen. George Sherrill, the lefties up and throwing. Henley Jansen, the right hander. We saw him last night. He's going to start to throw too. Yeah, those are two of their serious guys at the end of the game. Three and oh the cap. Tell us sorry is a guy trying to get some work. And it, 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 he walks Jason Worth there his work night may be over. A lot goes over at third. Sweeney's at second. Out of back, then the count is full three and two. Down to their final six outs. Rally cap time starts a little early. Back toward the middle, and that sneaks into center, a base hit. Two runs are going to score. An RBI for Worth. He's made this a five run game. Hey, Jason got a high fastball there in Tomahawk. They got right on top of it. Hit it back through the middle into center field. Didn't hit it that hard, but in a perfect spot. Probably is ball four, as you'll see here. Right there it is. It's ball four, but. He got on top of it and hit it hard through the middle. Uh, not hard, but he hit it through the middle and found a spot. Picks himself up a couple of ribbies. Rick Cuttycutt's coming out to the mound after that base hit by Jason Worth. There's no change just yet. Those guys just started loosening up. Buying him some time. And Ben Francisco is the batter. Still nobody out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Uh, Tishner coming out to break up the conversation. Francisco tonight is 0 for 3. He's grounded out. He is struck out. He's flying to center. It's a guy who came into this game red hot. Six for 18 in August. Now six for 21 with his 0 for 3 tonight. And he takes a fastball for a strike. Funny watching the catchers throw every ball that's in the dirt out. As soon as it goes in the dirt, now they just reach back and ask the umpire for a new one. And it didn't used to be that way. Old Dodgers, not old Dodgers team, but there was a period of time Dodgers team had that red brick uh, infield. The dirt uh, was red, and every ball hit the ground there. They had thrown out then. Even though some of their pitchers like to scuff them. They didn't get a chance to scuff those. <laughs> J. 
chops that foul into the seats. That went into the seats looking like a Super Bowl, and it's two and two. Step off. You know they're going to come out. And you're not allowed to argue a balk, but you can question it. See, does he step off? No, that's a balk. I guess they're going to say he stepped off somehow, but you know you cannot fake the throw to first. That's why they always have communication when the guy's going to play off of a runner at first. You know, so they don't look over there and then fake a throw. Right. Well, that was my thought. Is that you know if you. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe they're saying he stepped off. Now Todd Tisch is going to talk to Mike Riley. Yeah, I, I think once he steps to third, it yeah. doesn't step off. It's a ball. I did too. That's what, that, what I said too. I mean, I, I don't know what they could have seen there. But, you know, that's interesting too because box are like balls and strikes. You're not allowed to discuss them or argue right. them. And they, they, you know, they're <laughs> they know the Phillies have a point here where they have to at least talk about it. It's a lack of concentration by the pitcher too. Oh yeah. It's like he had a, he thought he had a first and third. There it is. He's going yeah, to the ball. Out of it. Now here comes Joe. He's got to come out and talk to him about how did that just happen? I don't know if I've ever seen that before. So Joe Torrey's going out to talk to Todd Tischer. Watch it again, right? There. And he faked it first. Now what he's probably saying is if it's first and third you can do that. I don't know. I've never seen that before. I can't wait to find out exactly what happened there. I, I think the rule is you know if it's first and third then the base runner at first knows that there's an intent you know to chase the runner back at third before there's a throw over to first. OK. I, I don't know. It's he's being more deceptive than anything the pitcher is. And I don't know if he's allowed to do that. Well, at Tory's point is going to be, how all of a sudden did four guys not call that, <laughs> and you got together, and now you did? And plus, they have a five-run lead, so it's easier to take. Two and two, the count to Francisco. In the air to left center field. That's pretty well hit. Pesendik going out into the alleyway. He's not going to get it. A one hop off the base of the wall. Scoring easily from second worth an RBI double for Francisco. Hey it's a ball game again. The Phillies trail it by four. Yeah Ben shoots that ball down the alley and left center got up in the wind and it really took off. Here it comes Belisario her fastball came middle in and Boy, it's shot out there off the Southwest Airlines sign. Jason Worth scores down by four. And Francisco is safe and secure at second base, safe and secure with New York life. Well, Belisario is no longer secure in this game. He's being lifted for a new pitcher. Joe Torrey out to the hill. He took the baseball from his right hander. Another right hander coming on with nobody out here in the bottom of the eighth. The Phils have pulled to within four. Well, Ronald Belisario has had himself a long year on the restricted list just activated before this series. He's given up three runs so far the sitting on four hits and he is not happy. Don Mattingly tried to slide out of the way of that de deflected glove. Boy guys hate that on the bench you know there's no excuse for that nonsense. And, you know managers coaches they just they get hurt doing that. You know, I know it happens once in a while and. That is the type of thing that causes fights and dugouts. Well, Kenley Jansen is into his eighth game, second time he's appeared in this series. He hasn't allowed a run. Four hits, that's it, in seven innings. And he comes on with Ben Francisco at second. 
And then nobody out here in the bottom of the eighth. Phillies, well, they have a chance to get even closer. Well, they, have, they have some left handed moves off the bench in Dobbs, Schneider, and Brown. We don't, as you mentioned, Tom, we don't think Lowe's available. And uh, so they'll keep Cheryl up for them. Ruiz, two hits tonight. And it's one ball and no strikes. Francisco thought about going to third. He no, broke it that stops. No reason for it. There's nobody out. And you're down by four runs. He shouldn't even be thinking about going to third base right now. But it won the count, 92 at the knees, and it's evened up against Ruiz. Braves are off today. Phillies, they win, could pull to within two. Giants have already won. Phillies are a game and a half back in the wild card. Outside. Because Ben Francisco was dancing around out there and uh, he had uh, Jansen's attention, and Carlos Ruiz got tired of it and stepped out. That's my point. You know, you let the hitter hit here. You're down by four runs. Three and one. I like Carlos calling time, not only because he wants to make sure that he's set, but also this is a young pitcher. You make him stir a little bit. Valdez is in the on deck circle. Yeah, and you know, they have to explain to him when the game's over that that runner at second base, it's like he's not even there. Forget about it. Right? That may be what Terrio just told him. Don't pay any attention. We're not worried about him right now. Carlos fouls it back toward the Hall of Fame club. On the right field line, they'll slice out of play. And the count remains three and two. They really like Jansen. They think he has a chance to be good. He's so young and he there's a lot of teaching involved, but a catcher who is now a pitcher, and uh, they like his makeup and they and they think he has a really good arm. And time will tell. He's taken to the switch to being a pitcher. You know. Pretty commonly. Well, he couldn't hit. <laughs> so, you know, if he wanted to get where he is right now and get Major League meal money, this was the, the way to do it. Carlos rips it. Oh, diving play by Blake. Oh, and he throws out Ruiz. What a momentum switcher that could be. Oh, that's through first and third, maybe even a run. That's a heck of a play. Great play. As they put Blake in. Couple innings ago as a defensive replacement. He has an RBI and a really good defensive play. That ball was scalded by Carlos Ruiz. Here it is. He just all over this and Blake just full extension and he is a really good third baseman and showed it there. A one out for Wilson Valdez. Dominic Browns come out of the on deck circle. He'll pitch it for the Phillies. Valdez this evening, one for three. They turn back and chase Francisco to the bag. Was reacted as if that wasn't a foul ball. The home plate umpire called it a foul ball, but he jumped up and 
went after pretty quickly. That's right, hold it up. Get that foul ball from Emily, hold it up, get yourself on TV. Trying to get a couple more runs here in the eighth, keep chipping away. They have one more chance in the ninth if they can't get it done here in the eighth. Back toward the middle, that's going to be another run. Francisco's around third, he's heading for home. Kemp's throw cut off by Loney. An RBI single for Valdez. It's now nine to six. Oh, he showed that graphic. There on uh, Wilson Valdez, what he's done in, in these situations lately. Now five out of six as he scores Ben Francisco in the base hit. Kemp's not going to throw that ball home because they want to make sure the runner Valdez stays at first base. Here it is, nice piece of hitting right back through the middle. Sam Perlazzo hasn't come it all the way, and you see Kemp just throws that back in towards the middle of the diamond. And here comes Joe Torrey to bring Cheryl in. So George Cheryl's going to come on. He's a left-hander to face the left-handed hitting Dominic Brown. He's just been introduced as a pinch hitter for the Phillies. Joe Torrey didn't think he needed to use his bullpen that much tonight, particularly when his team led it 9-2. But this is the third pitcher he has used in this inning alone. So with one out here at the bottom of the eighth and a runner at first, we've got a pitching change. Well, the Phillies have made this a game again. They're down by just three with one out here at the bottom of the eighth. And the Dodgers have had to use their bullpen here in the eighth. George Sherrill at his 46th ball game, one and two, a high earned run average. But he's been way better against lefties than righties, and he's got a lefty to deal with. Wilson Valdez who had an RBI single as a board. And Dominic Brown. Pinch hits for the Phillies. Brown overall hitting 237, a home run, 11 RBIs. And he hits one down the left field line, and it'll slice out of play. There has been a couple of times that Brown against lefties has kind of been overmatched, but then there, there have been other at bats where he's. <laughs> He's hung in there and he's done a pretty good job against them. He may not have all the hits to show for it just yet, but you can see that he's a confident kid. And a fastball swung on a miss. It's 0 2. Kershaw, six and two thirds, six hits and two runs. Dodgers bullpen. Two thirds, five hits, four runs. Look out in their bullpen now. The guy that big is going to be one person. That's got to be Broxton. Well, he's had some history with that guy, too. There he is. I guess they bring him in here in the eighth. I bet. And Jimmy, part of that history. <laughs> that hit he got last year. Outside, two and two. That play that Blake made. Wow, that's the only out they have in this one. Yep. Two and two, the count to Dominic Brown. Man. I believe he took that. It was outside, but really close. What's left of the 44,000 plus coming to their feet? In the air to left 
field. Towering shot. Pesednik moves back and over. Two outs. Valdez draws the throw. So Dominic Brown is retired. And back to the top of the order for Jimmy Rollins. And Charles in this game to Ibanez. Because if Ravul Ibanez were to come up, he'd represent the tying run. So you want the left hander on the mound. Kind of neat looking at Raul in the on deck circle. It looked like he just made himself a, a home plate in the dirt. Get himself ready, trying to time Cheryl a little bit. 2 0 the count to Jimmy. Valdez leads off first. Should be 0 for 3. I take here. Get that tying run up. Ball four. And the tying run is coming to the plate here in the bottom of the eighth. Really saw this coming, right? And this inning started. Unbelievable. Nine to two when this inning started. Oh, he's a batted around. Two for two against Cheryl. The inning began with Polanco's leadoff single. He came around to score. He's waiting next. Jimmy's on first Valdez is on second good speed on the base pass for the Phillies. There's Polanco Ibanez an 18 game hitting streak and the game on the line. He's hit it hard tonight too a couple of times sure has. To the right side Terrio will go to the Second to retire Rollins and the side is retired. The Phillies bat around in the eighth. They get four back. So that means they've made it a three run game as we go to the top of the ninth. The Dodgers lead it 9 6. The Phillies trail it by three as we go to the top of the ninth. They scored four runs in their half of the eighth. And now, as we go to the ninth, we say it again. It's up to the bullpen to try to keep this a three run game. Danny Baez, he'll be called upon to pitch at his 43rd game. Two wins, a 5.54 earned run average. And he'll face a pinch hitter in Jay Gibbons as we start the ninth. Gibbons overall. Four for nine since being called back up from the minors. And his first home run since 07 earlier in this series. And you see his career numbers against Danny Baez. Three for 12 with a couple walks. Oh, and to the count. Phillies in their half of the ninth will have Polanco, Sweeney, and Worth. And they try to get one more shot at the Dodgers in their bullpen. And it's going to be Jonathan Broxton. But first, they got to get through this top of the ninth. Right side, right through the hole. And Gibbons is aboard with the leadoff single. Bullpen tonight has allowed five of the nine runs to score. The Phillies haven't had a pitcher yet tonight. Unfortunately, they've been able to not get, not give up anything. And that's kind of like that first game of this series, you know, where 
You know they keep trying to catch up but it's tough. Well, here's Pesednik and he's been a thorn in this series. Pesednik has scored twice tonight. He has a couple hits. He's been on base four times. And you not only cheat for a double play with this guy you cheat in a little bit more because of his speed. And it gives him a lot more room to slap a ball through. Look how shallow those infielders are. How much they're in. On the outside corner, it's even now one and one. There's double play depth, and then there's that. Taking a long look over at Larry Boa. One and two. Jimmy Rollins made him laugh the other night. He he said uh, that when we got that shot of them laughing out there. He, he says if Pesednik's like you, he just takes it, and he runs while he hits it. That's what he used to hit. Towards short, that could be two. That's one of the only ways you could double up Pesednik. It's hit hard and hit right at the fielder, and he's right around the bag. You let it hit the mound and take a nice oh, that's big hop. Yeah. <laughs> that is beautiful. Yeah, he is tough to double. I mean, he's tough to get out anyway. But watch it hit the mound, boink, right like that, and it jumps right up. And they were cheating up the middle and shallow for that double play. and. Well, you talk about a nice hop, doesn't get any nicer than that. Terrio, there's a hitter with two outs, a chopper over the mound. Tough play. Valdez has it, throws off balance in time. And the side is retired. No runs, a hit, nobody left here at the top of the ninth. Danny Baez makes sure that the Phillies are down by just three. Last chance with Placido Polanco to lead it off. The Phillies are down to their final three outs here at the bottom of the ninth inning. And the Dodgers probably didn't think this would happen tonight, but they have to turn to Jonathan Broxton to try to close it out. 47th game for the big man. Four and three, a 2.91 earned run average, 21 saves. He's blown four. And the same scenario as the eighth kicks off the ninth. Polanco, Sweeney, and Worth. Rally caps were spun and fitted in the eighth. And the result, four runs. See his career numbers against the Phillies. That's the regular season. Now the National League Championship Series, you saw the, the numbers were heavily to the side of the Phillies. And this is what happened the last time we saw Jonathan Broxton. Looked like we're going to go back to Los Angeles for sure. Pitch was middle in to Jimmy Rollins. He shot it right in a perfect place. The two runs scored, and the Phillies beat the Dodgers and then of course went on to win the next night and go to the World Series again. And the Dodgers looked like they were going to be able to send the game back to their home ballpark and nobody wanted to go there. There's still one more game in Philadelphia of course and then two remaining out there and they got it over in five. It was explosive that night here in Philadelphia. Let's see if it could be explosive again. That was they've gotten him two years in a row in the game four. the year before of course was Matt Stairs. Polanco leads it off and he takes a fastball in one ball and no strikes. I think Broxton just has not been himself. Uh, you know that his fastball doesn't have the same velocity his slider doesn't have the same bite. That one was 96. First time he's worked in this series. Well this guy. A lot of years lights out when he would come in. You know, he would just throw so hard and then mix in a slider. And then the Phillies got him in the playoffs. He says that the playoffs from two years ago wasn't in his head last year. Oh, and that got him. Alonco's goes aboard. He's hit by a pitch. Luckily, it just grazed him. So he's aboard one more base runner and that means the tying run will be at the plate. Thank goodness this doesn't hit him. Look it's headed right for that elbow again and it just hit his uniform. 
If Broxton nailed him there with a 96 in that area of that elbow, oh boy. I mean, just a, just grazed it. Just grazed the bottom of the 2 7. Yeah. And it was right near the elbow. It's been nine days since Broxton's last save. Here's Sweeney. And there's a slider. And he hasn't thrown a strike yet. They gave the Phillies a lot of credit in this game. There's a lot of heart the way they've come back and, and, and gotten after the Dodgers because look at the Dodgers taking the heart out of them with that three spot in the eighth. Even the two of the seven, even the two in the seventh, right on Kemp's homer. Two and up. Veteran catcher heading out to the mound. Doesn't say a whole lot. To try to get Broxton back in some kind of rhythm. Not necessarily a guy you would think about throwing a ground ball double play because he's a, a strikeout fly ball pitcher, but he does have four. The Fanatics got a counterpart. Followed the technique and he's carried it over. And he just guided that one for a strike at 95. Yeah, and Sweeney's in take mode there too because you know you want to get the tying run up there and he's thinking, boy, Broxton's all over the place. Maybe he'll walk. Sweeney has two hits tonight. He singled his last time up, singled back to the first. And that's the first strike the guy's thrown. You have five balls, one strike. Titchener says he thinks it's outside. I think it's outside. You know, it's whether it caught the front of the plate. Oh boy. Sure caught it outside. To it to the count. He's probably thinking as that pitch is coming in, I gotta swing at that, don't yeah. I? Went through another breaking ball right there. That shows you that he's not feeling his fastball right now, or his command of it, that's for sure. Throw a 2 1, a 3 2, a 2 1, and, and another breaking ball after that. Man. He is determined. And a 3 2 pitch coming to Sweeney. Staying alive. Well, this tough pitch is take. You know, it was close. He throws a 97 fastball in that spot. Chance of beat LA ringing through the stadium. He's chanting, and he's also trying to put a spell on Broxton. Seven that time. And that was a strike. This guy's got to go 280, 290 out there. He is huge. He's, He's a big cat. Working up a sweat. Watch out, dude. <laughs> Blanco goes. Ooh, fouled it off. He got a good pitch to hit. Charlie trying to mix it up a little bit there. The count three and two, and nobody out. He hadn't sent Blanco in the previous pitches. 
Well, that's Davy. Yeah, and a lot of that's with Davy and, and, and Polanco talking over. You know, they just feel they can get there. The one thing you hold your breath on is a line drive double play when you're down by three runs. Kidding me, threw him a 3 2 slider. Wow. Unbelievable. That's Joe's going to bat. Tori's coming out and to talk to him himself right now. Yeah, a great at bat, as you say, Tom, by Sweeney, but a 3 2 slider, a three run lead. Man, man, in the 90, and you've got a 97 fastball working. You get that. It's a nine pitch at bat. He just asked him, do you trust your stuff? Yeah, because right. That's what we're saying. He doesn't trust his fastball right now. You throw a 3-2 slider, you, you, come on. You, you know, I know Sweeney was fouling them off, but he's fouling them over his own dugout. You know, it's not like he's out there yanking them where you think, oh, he's really on me. Well, he said he trusts his stuff with Tori asked him that. Just a second ago, we'll see. Jason Ward tonight. Oh, that's a that's a veteran manager with a clue when I ask a question like that. Like, you, you trust your stuff, you want me to go get somebody else. Challenging them without really challenging them. Tying run is at the plate. Nobody out here in the ninth. What an old account. Well, he may trust it, but he can't get it over right now. He is pitching away from the bat, especially after he hit Polanco. Turned out to be some pretty good theater the last couple innings. Great stuff. There's a strike. 97. It's one ball and one strike. Yeah, it's, it, if you're sitting in the Dodgers dugout and you see your guys throwing 97 and he's throwing sliders, you go, what are you doing? Well, that doesn't mean you don't mix one in or, or go for the kill with one or something, but. Not in some of the spots and the counts he's using. The runners lead off not being held on. The one there. Watch his lips on this wheels. Right there. Do you trust your stuff? Great stuff. I want to ask you something. Do you trust your stuff? We were, just sitting, we, were really just sitting, we were just sitting. We were just sitting in the dugout talking. We were just wondering. <laughs> Me and Rick were wondering. <laughs> Two and one. The count to Worth. Three and one. Well, they've been watching these meltdowns lately, and, and uh, you know they've seen it before, and they weren't aren't used to it with Broxton. Francisco waiting on deck, watching Polacco lead off second, Sweeney off first. It's three and one to Jason Worth. He thinks it's all him, and maybe it is. Ball four, the bases are loaded. How about this inning? I think they almost got to get him to get I to would think so. Yep. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe they're just going to let it ride. Yeah. Sometimes that's what a manager will do. I mean, this is his guy in this spot, and he just, uh, I'm going to live or die with him. Ben Francisco is the winning run here in the bottom of the ninth. Nobody out. The bases are loaded. You don't have to get it all with one swing here, but that'd be all right. Billy's trailed at three nothing after the first, four two after the fifth, six two after the seventh, nine two going into the bottom of the eighth, and there's a strike. They scored four in the eighth to make it a three-run game. Slider. He is he just he doesn't have confidence in his fastball. So he threw a slider for a strike when he really needed one.
Chopper toward third. Right oh. between the five hole. One run scores. Here comes Sweeney. How about that? It's a one run game. That's a double play ball. Get one RBI on it. A double play ball. Wow. How about this game? Earlier, he makes an unbelievable play in the eighth inning. And then Casey Blank just came up, and the ball stayed down. And they're saying, watch the butt here. Here it is. I mean, it's hit hard, and it's a double play ball right here. Would it get an in between hop? A little bit, and it just stayed down, and Blake didn't. Right through the wickets. Now what do you do here? You bunt? I think you almost have to. And tough guy to bunt off is Broxton with that hard fastball. Wow. They're talking about it, you know. Carlos two for two. Couple doubles against Broxton. The Dodgers have the corners pitched in with Worth at second, Francisco at first, nobody out here in the bottom of the ninth. Yeah, they have to look for a bun here. And a guy who's one of the best bunners for the Phillies is at the plate, Ruiz. Phillies don't have a hit in this inning. That's amazing. Yeah. You bet it is. Ruiz didn't show anything as Broxton stepped back to second. And they want to make sure they know what the bunt play is right now. Hey, you've got you've got an inning that <laughs> that is spinning every which way right now. And if you're the Dodgers, you're thinking it's spinning the wrong way. The Phillies the other way. And Carlos is swinging away, and he takes a pitch for a strike. Carlos tonight has two hits, an RBI, a run score. That he didn't show any sign of bunt there, so they backed up just a little bit, but they're not going to give up on it for the Dodgers. Because they can't. They can't be surprised here. Outside one and one. I mean, it would be appropriate if Ruiz does something heroic here after all the things he's done to the Dodgers over the last year. Absolutely. We're kidding around earlier about Bola saying that, you know, Johnny Bench is due to have a big game tonight. Because <laughs> he has killed the Dodgers. 28 come from behind victories for the Phillies. Trying to make it one big number 29. Pinching him in the outfield. Kemp pretty much straight away. In the air to left center field toward the alleyway. This one's going to be tied. It's off the top of the wall. The Phillies may win it. Francisco's right behind Worth. Carlos Ruiz, a two run walk off double. How about that? <laughs> Johnny Bench. <laughs> he said it. <laughs> Unbelievable. That is the most amazing thing you'll ever see. They win this game on one hit. One of the most incredible come from behind victories that this Phillies ball club with all of their success has seen in the regular season under Charlie Manuel. What are they going to do? They're looking for some kind of ground rule double it looks like. But that didn't get stuck out there or anything. Nope. A fan didn't interfere nope. with it either. Unbelievable. What has happened here at Citizens Bank Park over the last two innings. Down nine to two, the Phillies win it ten to nine. And he gets beaten on a slider. And Carlos nails that thing. Look at the bench. They know this is ball is in the alley, and it's got a chance to do some major. major. Here comes Broxton. Just gave up on his fastball. Here's a slider. Yeah. 
It worked, he says. That's amazing. Just amazing what Carlos Ruiz does to these guys. They're right there. You know, they were trying to get a fan interference, but that ball hit right on the top of the padding out there. He crushed it. He crushed it, and both base runners did a very good job. And here they come. Francisco was unbelievable. He was on the heels of Jason Worth and Carlos Ruiz, our Chevrolet player of the game. And he's down on the field with Sarge. Sarge, take it away. Hey guys, thanks a lot, Carlos. Here we are again. Game winning hit. Tell me about that pitch there in the last inning. Hey man, I was, uh, I was so happy, man. I was looking at the go pitch to head. And then he threw me in a slider right in the middle. And I was already for that. I was looking something sub right there. And I know he wanna give me one. And I, I got it, so I was so happy. It was a night nice win. I tell you what, here's a guy that throws the ball 95, 97, and you're sitting on his slider there. You got a good pitch, but you've been making a habit late in the ball game of being able to deliver. Man, that situation you gotta uh, look for one pitch. You don't have to be in, uh, between. You gotta make sure you know you gotta get good pitch to hit. If he throw that pitch, you gotta get it. So. Woo! That happened. I was so happy, you know, with the wing, and it's a good comeback. Hey, well, now they've gone from the uh, giving us the uh, stuff in our face with the pie. Now we got Gatorade, and I gotta let him know I gotta send him a cleaning bill. But congratulations and continued success. All right, thank you. Man. All right, Carlos. <laughs> All right, Sarge, thank you very much. We'll make sure that shirt gets cleaned. I don't think Carlos cares. He's feeling pretty good about himself. <laughs> That's an unbelievable night here at the ballpark. This is why he's feeling so good. He absolutely crushed this ball to the alleyway in left center field, and that his teammates crushed her between first and second as the Phillies win it.